For real old school laughs, you're in for a treat because we've got them right here. Flip City Magazine. Remember Mad Magazine? Then it went woke? Well, don't worry. Flip City has no chance of going woke. That's right. Four times a year, you'll get an actual printed magazine full of jokes, stories, comics, and more, all about today's pop culture, entertainment, and woke politics. Flip City takes terrible entertainment trends we love to hate with hilarious parodies of Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, The Walking Dead, Star Trek, Hunters, and more. Trust me when I say there is nothing else like Flip City on the market. So subscribe today. It will be delivered in print. Or you can even get it digitally if you're one of those wacky Zoomers. Either way, follow our link and sign up today. And if you put in midnight, you get an extra 10% off. Check out Flip City Magazine today. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the program. It is Friday, Good Friday, for those who are, uh, um, I, I don't think the term celebrate is the right one. Uh, observing, so what, I think is the word. What I'm is Good about. Friday? It's the day before Easter. Yeah, but what, what the is... Friday before Easter. What happened? I mean, if Sunday is the day... I believe that, this is the day that he was crucified. Oh, okay. Well, it, I mean, if you look at it in the, so I said observe of things. Yeah, it is. It is a good day because he had to die on the cross to atone for our sins. So this I is think that's how it goes. But we're not going to get all religious here, folks. It's no. six and I flying solo for now until everybody else gets here. It's the ticks uh, show. It's the ticks show. That's right. We're ticks. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Andre's on his way. He went to see Monkey versus a Lizard, and. Uh, We'll see who else shows up, but uh, good morning, everybody out there. Uh, it's time for Midnight Sedge in the morning. I didn't want to make you guys wait any longer, so just thought I'd get things fired up. We'll we'll see what you guys are up to, do some super chats, maybe a brief story or two before Andre gets here, and then, yeah, we'll talk about some other stuff when he does, but uh, yeah, some a lot of stuff going over on over at Disney right now, uh, so we'll try to get into that. But uh, we've got a monster of a movie out this weekend. And speaking of, Grimzilla has been here for two years. Congratulations, sir. Happy anniversary. Indeed. So it's got to say, new Godzilla X-Kong is the Showa era bombastic fun. We all knew it was going to be. This and Minus One showcase the best of Godzilla and Kong. Oh, maybe we agree with you. We'll have to get into that a little later. But uh, yeah. It is a lot of fun, I thought, for the most part. Spoilers on my review, but yeah. <laughs> I had a good time. Yeah. Corbin Dallas uh, has been here for five months. Thank you for being here, Corbin, and for your support. We got Callum Lyle in the house, sends in an Australian $5, and says, I'm glad they uh, didn't make Suko Mini Kong like a baby Yoda. And as cool as Scar King and Shimo Ice Titan were, they weren't as threatening as Ghidorah. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, I can see where you're coming from, though. Yeah, that's a good point about having Baby Kong, not like Baby Grogu, Baby Yoda. Be, uh, yeah, just to sell toys. Uh, Patrick Robinson sends in four ninety nine. says, So a bit surprised no one brought this up, but Tarot is not original. It's based on a novel called Horoscope by Nicholas Adams. Well, so I didn't even know this, Patrick. You're bringing it to my attention for the first time. There you go, see? <gasps> I am but at least it's based on a novel and not... <laughs> order that and... Uh relish it thank you so much patrick i appreciate that yeah so there you go at least it's uh at least somewhat original i guess you could say that's the way most movies used to be made <laughs> calum lyle sends in another five thank you so much says tom that every that monarch episode everyone hates was it was written by the same woman that did that i am Starfire comic oh really she self inserts herself in everything you know, what's funny about that is really, it's not that it's not that I have a problem with there being a lesbian love storyline. It's that it goes nowhere. They don't 
they don't tell us what happened to her. You don't get to um, see the scissoring. Well, no, like, yeah, I mean, that too. Actually, you do get to see some scissoring with some other chick, remember? <laughs> no. That's what she gets. They, they end up breaking up because she's don't off. Spoil it, don't spoil it. I thought I you saw it. I haven't seen the whole thing. Oh, okay. Well, I'm working okay. on it. New new cool stuff keeps coming out. It's My hard bad. to keep up. Yeah. My bad. I thought you already watched it. I'm going to write it um, But yeah, so they just don't really give you any resolution to that. I mean, maybe they'll pick it up in another season if they get another one, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, that was really the only downside of the whole show, in my opinion, other than some of the annoyances of the characters. But uh, Pirate Queen's been here for 18 months. Thank you for that. Uh, Cal Miles says, Chris Gore impression. Oh, yeah. New Empires got awful, got awful. Only dumb people went to see it. I'm smart. That only talks about RRR all the time. I don't know. Did he not like the film? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, But yeah. Hmm. Uh, Dr. I know I'm very intelligent if I do say so (laughs) myself and I went to see it and I had fun. I mean, it's a fucking movie for Christ's sake. Oh, it's some people I think are holding it to too high of a standard or it's a popcorn flick. It's like you said, it's a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Yeah, it was, it was great. I, I recommend it. Well, like I said, we'll de- get get a little deeper into that, yeah. and like Hollow Earth here in a little bit when Andre gets back, because he saw Monkey Puss Lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Long Dong was sends in a pound ninety nine pound that like button if you haven't already. Thank you so much. Then we got Hyper Guyver here says, not interested in two apes throwing poo, bleh, throwing poo at each other. I wanted to see that. I guess I go to the zoo. Well, it was pretty poo free. Yeah, there wasn't any. I didn't see anybody dropping a deuce. Nobody throwing anything. Not poop, anyway. There was a lot of throwing. I was throwing. <laughs> but, I mean, I get it. The movie's not going to be for everybody. Yeah. It's just one of those things. So, But, uh, yeah. So, with that, uh, we have uh, some news to get into. I was hoping some other people would be here by now. But, uh, being that it's a quasi-holiday, I guess we are flying solo for bar this morning so yeah um the big talk of the town uh is uh disney being sued left and right on things and not only that they uh, it's, they just got done with another quasi lawsuit or whatever you want to call it here now i am not as up on all this stuff i was hoping to have some of our disney guys here this morning uh so uh do we want to start with well do you want to hold on to that till andre's here Maybe, but I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't really have much else to go on right now. What about, I mean, uh, what about that other link I sent you about uh, an actor that we lost? Oh, that's right. We we're going to start He's with that anyway. Iconic. Thanks for reminding me. I totally spaced that out. That's where we were going to start this morning. Uh, where is it? Oh, and we have actually, we have one of the men of the hour here. Uh, we are ready to get into that article. Good morning, Valiant. Yes, you are. Uh, hey. Well, before yeah, we no, do break into that, like Six was saying, we were just about to uh, mention something else, too. But uh, how are you doing? The the news is flying this morning, it seems like. Yeah, I didn't expect to be on YouTube on Good Friday, so I'm going to I don't want to stay too long. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard it. to avoid this. Uh, I put out a video a little while ago on uh, some of the breaking news from the Wall Street Journal in the last 24 hours regarding the proxy fight. Um, yeah, that video is blown up. So. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna yeah, have to ask you about that in just a minute here. Let let's do this real quick first. Uh, we lost a veteran actor today, uh, Louis Gossett Jr. of Officer and a Gentleman, Roots, Enemy Mine, Punisher, tons of movies. 87 years old, Iron Eagle, you name it. He's been in so many, so many, so many movies. Uh, he will definitely be missed. Uh, six, uh, did you want to say anything about, um, Mr. Gossett Jr.? Yeah, he's, he's somebody who I I just remember seeing him in, in, um, oh my God, you just said it. Iron Eagle. Yeah, he was in that Iron Eagle. And I remember thinking of him as like a dad, like he was, he's always been kind of a, a comforting presence to have around in a movie. And I, his personality is nothing like my father's was, but um, he's an epic actor. He's so part of um, my growing up, but you know how, you know, he's 87. So 
gone too soon, but you know, what can, what can you expect? Yeah. I mean, he got to live a pretty full life, but yeah, you're right. 87 still a little young, yeah. but yeah, no, I mean, he's somebody I feel like broke through the race barrier quite early on. Like I don't remember him getting pigeonholed into a lot of roles that Hollywood normally would thrust upon black actors. I mean, he was kind of like what I would consider post Sydney Poitier, but pre Morgan Freeman, that go to mm -hmm. steadfast actor that no matter what, the role required as long as you just needed somebody with some gravitas. It didn't matter if they were black or white, right? Like, you know, I mean, I mean, another one I would probably put in that would probably be James Earl Jones. Um, yeah. But yeah. I mean, he, he, it's a big loss. I mean, enemy mine was one of his greatest performances and people don't even oh, remember that yes. movie. Yeah. He, he played the famous. drock. <laughs> yeah. He was in the um, human and your stupid Mickey mouse. He was in color purple. The good one, the original. Fantastic actor. Great actor. Uh, Valiant, uh, anything to say quick about Lewis before we uh, get to the Disney business? Uh, a tremendous actor. A tremendous actor and a, and a terrible loss, but, you know, thus is life. Uh, and he had a great one. Mm -hmm. I got no place else to go. <laughs> Remember that officer and gentleman? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in Digstown. Jaws 3D is probably one of the ones that I remember as a kid. Love it, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. Seal the park. Close it down. <laughs> seal the park. You heard me? Seal the park. Yeah. I love it. Of course, uh, the, yeah, uh, ste the steers and queers comment was always the best from Officer and Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably Two the first things time from I've ever Oklahoma, heard boy. Steers and queers. Yeah. Loved it. Which one Loved are it. you? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, with that, uh, that's too bad. He will be missed and great in toy soldiers. Yeah. That's another film. If you guys haven't seen that one, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Holy yeah. cow. I forgot about that. I yeah. love that movie. The best part about that movie. We get to see, uh, Will Wheaton. Will, <laughs> Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Why are you saying it weird? <laughs> like whipped cream. Cool uh, whip. Anyway, a cool whip. That's what it was. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Whip. Uh, but yeah, he will be missed. Uh, Iron Eagle like needs a, re a release here in the States bad. I got the Italian uh, imports, but uh, yeah. Oh, don't Doesn't get that. They'll love. just remake it now. Oh, God. That's all we need. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're glad to have you here because boy, oh boy, where do you want to start with this, man? Uh, uh, let, let's there's... actually start at the beginning of the end. Let, let's do this real quick because I thought this was funny and you guys are one of the first ones I thought of when I saw this headline. According to Hollywood Reporter, the DeSantis versus uh, Disney battle just ended in a stalemate. Yeah, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was no, reading this. Not, I'm like, not even, not where even do they remotely. get this from? <laughs> uh, be because the Hollywood Reporter, like most of the media out there, just refuses to admit that they were once again dead ass completely wrong uh, about everything from, the, from Jump Street. Uh, I mean, everybody from Hollywood Reporter to Variety to Salon to Slate to even some of the business trade magazines uh, to Legal Eagle. You know, all these people out there totally wrong about this whole thing from the get go. Uh, legal mindset. Andrew Esquire was right. Pro was right. I toot my own horn. I was right. We told you all all this from the very beginning when this thing started exactly how this was going to go down in the sense that this was not going to be a win for Disney. The, the, the law was not on their side. At no point would, would a federal or state court ever just agree with Disney that a private company could write a unilateral contract with a government body for that government body to turn its governmental powers over to a private company and not have a state legislature who truly owns those powers not step in and correct that. I mean, it's just, the whole thing was stupid from Jump Street. It wasn't clever on Disney's part. Everybody that said, oh, this was clever, they they entered into what basically would amounted to an HOA, a homeowners association agreement, with the former Reedy Creek District, and that they completely controlled, um, and that that was going to somehow hold muster in court. It's just, the whole thing was stupid. Yeah. Um, it, it was a desperate effort by Disney to try to just delay the inevitable and people took it as, Oh, this was so smart and so brilliant. Well, sure. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. If brilliant is doing something that is going to have absolutely no chance of succeeding, but looking I cute. Love, okay. I love how they frame this because it's like, 
they go through the you know the basics here at the first the, the Mem- first amendment lawsuit all that business mm-hmm. DeSantis wasn't faring any better which though. they he lost, lost that hundreds one too. of millions of dollars <laughs> in economic development when disney calling him really like that's what they're 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 saying that this was a big loss somehow for because they didn't build something that makes money money for disney but they're right, going like, to in the future all they all they did was well, delay anyway, it yeah. meanwhile yeah. uh universal is spending how many billions and billions of dollars completing epic universe right now what is yeah, but as doing? They, nothing and as they basically admit it here like the settlement uh basically says that the 11th hour man- maneuver that bid to retain power over the district is now null and void and agreed to pause any appeal of the ruling dismissing its and dismissing its first amendment lawsuit sounds an awful lot to me like disney took it on the face there oh yeah Disney Not like, folded. Yeah. they completely like, I, folded i love how they're trying to to frame it but yeah. you got to remember when this started this started with disney filing a lawsuit in federal court with several complaints i don't remember how many they were but let's say there were like i think there were five or six of them right the response from CEFTA, the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, which took the place of Reedy Creek after the legislation that the Florida House and Senate and signed in by the governor happened about a year a year ago now. Um, CEFTA filed a state suit uh, against Disney for this 11th hour uh, uh, illegal agreement uh, that Disney put in place. Right. That put the brakes on the federal lawsuit because a federal judge would ostensibly say, well, there is a connected issue that is proceeding through a state court right now. So we're going to wait for that to clear before we, the federal court, rule on the similar matter. In response to that, and I think Disney knowing that they were going to lose, they dismissed all but one of the complaints at the federal court level themselves. They 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 just said, okay, we retract all this. We're going to leave in place only the issue of the free speech argument, the First Amendment, quote-unquote, violation, which it was not a violation, clearly, um, by Florida and DeSantis against Disney. And as we stated many times, that holds no water. You don't need to be an attorney to look at this and figure it out. The action that was taken was a lawful action against a special taxing district, not the Walt Disney Company. Reedy Creek is not owned by Disney. Regardless of whether they have autonomous power to appoint board members, Reedy Creek is a special taxing district that is owned by the people of the state of Florida. And it's managed by the legislature, who they can grant and remove powers from at will. Well, they decided to remove powers. That's a lawful action of the legislature. Not against the Walt. They didn't shut Walt Disney World down. They didn't come in and bar the gates with Florida National Guard. No, they just said, well, you're not going to be in control of this district anymore. We're going to bring it in line with the other 1,900 districts that are in Florida in terms of power. Um, And, of course, a federal judge, as we predicted, dismissed Disney's claim on the First Amendment issue. So then we go back to the state issue. That was the only one remaining in court. Uh, And Disney had no chance of winning that either for the reasons I stipulated earlier. And a judge dismissed that. And in the agreement, Disney agreed that their claims were essentially baseless and null and void. Uh, And oops, (laughs) there goes my camera. Uh, It's freaking out. Battery dead. Yeah, well, it shouldn't be the battery. I think it's just been on so long. It's on a power supply sometimes. Oh, gotcha. But but the funny thing was, was that as... uh, as our attorney uh, for that parkplace.com stipulated, the great Ron Coleman, a man who specializes in First Amendment litigation, internet free speech litigation, and has even been involved in cases argued before the Supreme Court of the United States, so he might know what he's talking about. Um, Ron Coleman, I think, put it brilliantly. He said, the summary of this uh, dismissal is thus. Uh, we at Disney are not admitting any fault, but everything we did was shit. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it, that's there. there is no win-win here. And I thought that was the funniest thing uh, was when the pixie dusters out there that had been saying how clever this was and how stupid Ron DeSantis was and how Disney just just rolled him and all this. They went from that attitude to when this came out a couple of days ago. Well, it's a win-win for everybody. 
<laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's they they are totally coping and hedging. Uh it's not a win-win for everybody. This was this was a wipeout for Disney. Yes, indeed. Now, also, there was uh, some breaking news this morning about Bob Iger being sued again. Uh, so what, what's this about? Because you just dropped a video here just a little bit ago yourself. Um, I don't know if, well, you, okay, Bob Iger, which which one are we talking about specifically? Okay, you just dropped a video here, and I assume that's what Andre had for the title here. Um, um, well, I just dropped a video, but that was on the Nelson Peltz proxy fight. Okay, I yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure then what he means, but okay, so let's talk about Nelson Peltz then. The hell with it, all right? Because I have no idea what he's talking about then, because he set this up and then he went to see the monkey and and and. There, there, okay, there is. Let me let me maybe 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 this is what we're referring to here because it's not actually a lawsuit. So hold on a second. Okay. Uh, let me share this with you backstage. Sure. You can pull that up. So. What what may be in reference to is this complaint uh, or this letter that was sent from America's First Legal, um, which they are the ones who filed the EEOC complaint against the Walt Disney Company uh, for unfair employment practices uh, about a month ago. And I don't know. Can you see what I shared backstage? Uh, it's not showing up for some reason. Okay, that's so weird. I can see it. It's backstage, but it's uh. it's. Last right. thing I see is the thing six and I said, no, 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 in below, like I shared my screen. Oh, okay, God, I'm sitting here looking in the DM group. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So here we are. Um, and America's first legal sends a letter to the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company alleging unlawful discrimination and misleading of shareholders. Now this is based on the same EEOC complaint they filed. Uh, about a month ago, like we said. In February, AFL revealed Disney's perverse system of discriminatory race and sex quotas. This is related to the Reimagine Tomorrow program, folks. In front of and behind the camera, and that they're talking about um, uh, not only in movies, of course, but also at, at, at employment at the Walt Disney Company. And I think we all remember the videos leaked from the Reimagine Tomorrow powwow uh, about uh, two years ago now. Um, that, that Christopher Rufo released uh, by filing a federal civil rights complaint with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. That's the EEOC. All Disney general entertainment productions are required to comply with Disney's DEI inclusion standards. Uh, some of the standards explicitly provide that 50 percent of the following jobs must be filled by members of, quote, underrepresented groups. And they go into a list there. Disney, along with Sundance, runs a grant program that provides twenty five thousand dollars to, quote, un underrepresented directors, which it defines as, quote, women, uh, AAPI, black, indigenous, native, Latin X, whatever that is, uh, LGBTQIA plus disability identifying and religiously marginalized individuals. Um, so this is they have now basically what they've done is they've sent a formal letter to the board of Disney. And, of course, they timed this uh, right ahead of the annual shareholder meeting for obvious reason. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's pretty extensive here. It's probably too much to go through in this show. But, um, yeah, and 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 I, I think they have a lot of valid complaints here. I really do. Now, the question is, does the EEOC take action? Do shareholders at Disney take notice of this and throw questions at the board? And this is what they're hoping for. If you remember last year during the annual shareholder meeting, we got the spiciest questions ever thrown at Bob Iger. Yeah. Um, and it's because I think a lot of people got in line early that morning. They pre-submitted a question uh, you know, via typing it in and, and submitting it while they're waiting in queue. And it might have been something like, hey, what's the future of Disney parks? But when they got on the air yeah. because they, you know, they thought the operator would thought, well, that's a pretty innocuous question. They shifted gears and said, Hey Bob, how come we are brooming children with, you know, yeah. stuff like this. I mean, that never would have made it on the air if somebody had actually said, this is my question I want to ask. So we're hoping obviously that that is going to happen again on Wednesday as well. It should. And I think this AFL letter and the EEOC complaint is going to go a long way to assist in the inspiration for doing that again. So that's that's the bulk of it. It's not actually a lawsuit. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless there's something else um, that's out there. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, this well, one from the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, as I say, day. the Hollywood Reporter had a had one here about Nelson Peltz as well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the, and the headline says Bob Iger's invincible era is over. Yeah. Oh my. Yes. And then the uh, byline says after a major wall street firm sides with activist Nelson Peltz ahead of April three shareholders meeting, investors are questioning how CEO plans to plot out growth and his own succession. So yeah, so so what's what's this about here? So which uh, firm sided with Peltz? Uh, wh- you're talking about which uh, mutual fund companies and whatnot? Yeah, or? that. So what? Why are they making such a big deal out of this? I guess is what I'm asking here. Uh, I, I mean, haven't like, I haven't finished going through this whole story. Now, oh, okay. The one I, the one I did a video on this morning was from a Wall Street Journal article that came out yesterday. And in it, and y'all can go watch the video, and I'll give you the details, uh, but in it, it was leaked to the Wall Street Journal that Nelson Peltz is leading the vote. Mm. Now, there's still, some big, there's still some big players out there, but as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, firms like ISS and Glass-Lewis. Glass-Lewis is the second largest proxy advisory firm to mutual fund companies and institutions that advise that everybody vote for the slate that Bob Iger put out. And then there's Institutional Shareholder Services, which is the biggest proxy advisory firm, advised their clients to withhold their vote for Mary Lagomasino and vote for Nelson Peltz. So that is going to have a tremendous impact. um, But you can go watch the video. I talk a little bit more about it there. So even with the big thing right now, even with Eisner and Lucas backing Iger, yeah, exactly. He's still facing Nelson. An uphill battle, it sounds right like. Yeah, wow. And it's, yeah. Okay, because I'm surprised. I actually thought, considering the support Bob was still getting from, you know, a lot that's of why he even, was so desperate to. He, that's why he's been running around so desperately trying to get these public endorsements. Uh, mm-hmm. Lucas is, of course, and I don't care what anybody right. else says. I will still continue to be highly suspicious of, uh, given his particular situation. And his wife, um, so which I covered before, Melody Hobson, well, George, George Lucas's wife, sits on the board of directors at J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, right next to Jamie Dimon. And Jamie Dimon was always going to be a huge backer, and Jamie Dimon was one of the first ones to come out and publicly endorse Iger and his slate. Um, and I think Melody Hobson probably has a lot of uh, legal power of attorney control over Lucas's estate and can speak for him. I mean, she's 25 years younger than he is. He's 80 years old. She's 55. Even if that's the case, George is a grown man who's always made his own decisions. So, I mean, we also got to just take that into consideration. Too. I, I understand that. But uh, look, I, look George and he likes look, money. He does. But <laughs> George didn't look so hot last year at the Indiana Jones premiere. And a public statement like this, especially that was clearly not George's words, um, that's out of George's character. But I'll always be highly suspicious of this to the well, day I drop dead. Well, George, His, George's statement that he made after he made the white slavers comment read just like the statement he made about the board a few weeks ago. It it read just yeah. like it. Which, and actually, uh, he just probably didn't write. Here. He probably didn't write that either. The language, the not language have, but, that was used in that in that press release of his endorsement talking about. Making magic is not for amateurs. That's right out of Disney proxy material. It is, uh, but the and that's the only is, line yeah. that makes me go, I don't know if he would say something like that. But no, what Well, there were several others in there. There were several regardless. others in there that were co- copy and paste. Look, I just I don't want people to get a false hope of like this idea that George Lucas is somehow going to be some fucking savior of Star Wars. He has moved on. Oh, I'm right? not, I'm not point, saying that. I'm just yeah, I'm, like, I'm I mean, I, I, I don't talking think about. Yeah, that that one that one piece. I'm strictly talking about. Yeah, no, this public I'm just saying, like, statement. At this point, like it's it's done, right? Yeah. Like there's nothing you can do about it. The, the 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 he has moved on. Whether his wife or anybody else was responsible for it. So another thing is you got to remember about George Lucas is he is two different people. Sometimes there's George Lucas the creative and there's George Lucas the businessman, and it is notoriously a joke about how frugal he is and all these other things like he's even made fun of it right like so yeah no like, I get it. at the end of the day i mean he's somebody who's very cost conscious and i'm sure he's even if let's just like i said my devil's advocate on this is i'm not gonna give i'm not gonna like pile on him but i'm also not gonna sit here and go he's not a businessman at the end of no, the day no i'm not saying that he knows either. compared to the one he doesn't 
but it doesn't matter from what it looks like here and from what you're saying is yeah it, it sounds like bob might have a bigger problem gaining uh control than he thought yeah uh, and folks in the chat look I, I don't conflate the issues i'm not saying that george isn't a lefty i'm fully aware no, 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 that, no. that he leans that way and i'm also as i've said in the videos that i've done and on the live streams where we've covered this george lucas even voting for Iger slate would not necessarily surprise me what surprised me what was very not george like was him coming out and making this you know reportedly making this personal public endorsement of Iger in the language that he did that's yeah the amateur me. line is the yeah. thing that stood out to me too because i would agree with you there because that's exactly what they keep referring to pelts as as an yeah. amateur yeah and um, he's not exactly saying he wants to come in and take over right like that's the other thing even though i thought he kind of fumbled the ball with this whole well, i'm not looking for bob Iger's job or anything like that however he put that whole thing it's like dude just you shouldn't even have mentioned that you should have just stayed steady and been like no look at the end of the day i don't care my whole goal is to make Disney a family company again so it's profitable, right? See, yeah. that's what I think he should have been saying or beating the drum with. But uh. Yeah, and look, those, those proxy advisory firms I was mentioning and, and the other ones like uh, Newberger Berman, they've come out. There's some other smaller mutual fund companies that have come out. ISS, like I mentioned before, which is a huge thing. They've come out and backed Nelson Peltz, and they've all said the same thing. We don't see... Uh, that Nelson Peltz is going to be quote unquote disruptive to this board or to anything else. He could actually be a very good net positive here as an outsider. And they've all extolled his track record as, as being, you know, fantastic. And, and that's the kind of thing right now that I think is having a lot of sway. And, and a lot of the, you know, the bigger mutual fund companies out there, um, regardless of what we think of them, they don't, they don't just automatically throw out the advice of ISS and things like this, uh, you know, just because they say, oh, well, screw that. We don't want to do that. I mean, they, they pay these firms gajillions of dollars over time. I mean, for this, uh, for this type of advice. So mm -hmm. um, the, the fight's not over yet at all. I mean, this is going to go right up until the annual shareholder meeting on Wednesday next week, April 3rd. Uh, we'll start our live show around 1230 Eastern uh, and the earnings call or not the earnings call. The annual shareholder meeting will start, I believe, at one Eastern. So we'll be covering that and uh, we'll know we'll know then uh, what the results are. And and like we've said from the beginning, it's a long shot for Pelts. It's always a long shot for anybody that wants to come in and try to proxy fight a company, especially one of the scale and notoriety of the Walt Disney Company. But it's looking like, as things continue to progress, that Nelson Peltz's chances of actually pulling this off, and Jay Rasulo is still very much a long shot at this point, but Peltz himself, um, as of right now, is looking like he's got a very good shot of pulling this off. Very good. Much more than I would have thought two, three weeks ago. No question. So did we, so this Blackwell's thing, this is what I guess might be possibly also what's in the headline here. Mm -hmm. um, Cause Disney. Oh yes. Dis yes. Yes. I did over disclosure this. over the hedge fund. Yeah. So this is, I think what the main title is actually referring okay. to. So what can yeah. you tell us about this situation here? Cause this came out yesterday. Yeah. I, okay. I did see this one. It kind of slipped my mind. We've had a lot going on with uh, other things as I'm sure y'all seen black girl gamers, the, the cats out of the bag. Now they actually sent a cease and desist letter to that park place. So we, we put that out there. We'll be talking about that more in the next few days. Um, but here what's going on here is black wells a couple of weeks ago. I actually did a video on this one too. Um, they came out and, and publicly stated made a complaint, whatever you want to call it, not a legal complaint until this, uh, saying that Disney had not previously done enough disclosure uh, with their relationship with Value Act. Value Act is a, an investment management firm that publicly came out and backed the Bob Iger slate of, of the board. Um, they were one of the first ones to come out and do that. Don't vote for Pelts. Don't vote for Blackwells. Just vote for Disney's board. Value Act... And they haven't had the relationship. I think it ended maybe a year ago or thereabout from what we can tell. Uh, but Value Act used to be one of the many, many managers 
that had a piece of the $15 billion Disney pension and 401k trust fund. Okay. Uh, Tryan did at one point as well. So just to be fair, Blackwell's is saying that they didn't like the fact that when Value Act came out and gave their public support of Disney, that they did not materially disclose in that uh, uh, in that PR release that they'd had a very lucrative uh, financial relationship with Disney for 15 years. I don't think they have it anymore, but I could be wrong, but I don't think they have it anymore. Now, if you go to, as I showed in the video, mm-hmm. if, you, if you pull up the actual, essentially what is a tax return, for the pension fund, which I pulled up, I had the I have the actual tax return for the the Disney pension. Um, you can see on there, you know, for years past, everybody that's involved in it, including Value Act. Those are public documents. Those ERISA documents. It's called a Form fifty five hundred. Uh, every ERISA plan has to file one every year. It's publicly disclosed in that public document, so it's not like it was completely concealed. Um, what Blackwell's is saying here is they're filing a complaint saying that Value Act should have reiterated this in their public support of Disney, and they didn't. Will this go anywhere? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the propensity for victory is here for Blackwell's, or honestly, if it even matters at this point. I think what Blackwell's right. is doing here is they're trying to put this out in the news uh, while there's still a great many outstanding votes that haven't been cast yet for the Disney board. And I think yeah, this, is, to, this is, this is pushing it out to try to alert people to right. the fact that, Hey, we think there's some funny business going on. That's their, it's opinion. no difference yeah. than any other time when like, like more recently we were talking about Bo DeMeo, for instance, we're all like kind of waiting for a shoe to drop here. Right. Right. Like, cause normally something like that happens just before that. And I, and, and, and that's kind of the same thing here is they're, they're using this, as a as a time to, I mean, I guess it's all, all all firing on all fronts on Bob Iger and Disney at this point. I guess is one way to look at it. Yeah, and I guess yeah. I didn't even know this. Uh, this is a sign of desperation here too. Scott Perry uh, just wrote in the chat. I actually saw an ad on YouTube about the upcoming board vote. It indicated yeah. to check yes for the current board and no for. If that is true, I can't even believe that. Why would they have an ad on YouTube? Uh, well, I can tell you that I think. If I'm not mistaken, somebody made a comment in the video that I released this morning uh, about the whole proxy thing about that Wall Street Journal article where Peltz was ahead in the vote count right now with just two days to go. Um, Somebody said they actually saw a Disney ad about it. So that might be what they're referring to. Like Disney may actually be running ads on YouTube and they're running before videos of mine. For obvious reasons, like they are they been. that desperate to get like the 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 few people who have like minuscule votes or something? Like, I mean, is that what's going on? Well, here? it's not necessarily a few people. See, my my videos when I do these kind of videos, the way that they're situated is that there's a lot of people outside of our regular community here that see them. There's right, a lot right, of right. People in the financial community in the Wall Street. That's community, what I'm I curious about. Yeah. So that's 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 who they're targeting. They're, they're I mean, letting, and there's that many people out there that they can't get to directly. I mean, that's where I'm like, oh, sure. I mean, you you probably got this is more like a less of a political kind of ad campaign in a way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands potentially of different shareholders out there of the Walt Disney Company. So, I mean, you, you, you've got to try to reach as many as possible. And that's why for the last couple of weeks, I've been really suspicious. I'm like, Bob Iger has been really, really aggressive at trying at, at tr- making this campaign, trying to get all these in, big public endorsements. It's like, you know what? If he was so comfortable in this, I don't know why he's he's acting like he's losing. <laughs> That's making a lot of sense to me because you're right. Like yeah. I thought for a while this is a more of an uphill battle for Pelts and the soul of Disney as opposed to Bob, who just kind of had it in the bag. Mm-hmm. And it was just more so like, yeah, Nelson it's still, Peltz it's is still like Disney's a, a pain in the ass lose. more than anything. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I see that now more so yeah. than I did before, definitely. It's still Disney's fight to lose, but um I mean, it, it looks like there's there's a much better chance today than than I would have thought two weeks ago. Yeah. So, any case. Well, um, let let's see what the audience because they have a few questions here specifically for I don't know how much longer you got. So just a few minutes, but I can hang around. I figured. Somebody's got, yeah. yeah. Waltman says in four ninety says, uh, yeah, I got the that vote for Disney slate ad while watching a clownfish video. Wow. 
Yep. That that's the same ad, Walt Man. That's the same ad that was running on on my video. Then Action Com sends in five and says, VR, the police have saying have a saying. It's not the charge, it's the ride, meaning they can F with you without bringing charges. Is that what Peltz is doing? Um, if I guess I don't quite understand. I mean, you, this is kind of, I think he's kind of, yeah, I think this is kind of where he's coming from where I was saying like my observation at this point was Peltz is just mainly being like a, an annoyance. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I, I see what he's saying here is like, I mean, well, Peltz wasn't getting in to be an annoyance. I mean, Peltz is, Peltz is in this thing to win. He's done this many, many times. That's what I'm saying. I noticed that now, too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah he's he's never done one of these things to where he just said, hey, let's try to get attention to this. Now, they spend money because they they he wants to get on the board. He wants to make a difference. Um, that doesn't mean that he goes in thinking that, well, this is a long shot, but we're going to do it anyway. But, I mean, he's, he's doing what he's doing for a reason. And, of course, Disney tripping over itself the, the, these last two years as badly as they have been. I mean, this is what's really helped. This is what's really helped. Whoops, I'm still muted here. And then we got Eugene Hong, who sends in five and says, watch them fortify the vote as a last minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, can they, I mean, can they really I mean, manipulate the vote? I mean, not, not, I hate to, not. I mean, apart from actually reaching out to investors and saying, hey, please, would you vote for us? No, not really, because it, it, when these votes are tabulated, they're they're usually done, especially for big S&P 500 firms they're done by third parties. This is you know, this is not it's not like Disney is sitting there counting its own votes in, in, in a, in a darkened room. Um, not that a third party couldn't be compromised either, but no, it couldn't, but it's much more difficult. And then you're, you're talking about, if that ever got out of the bag, you're, you're talking about major, major problems with the, yeah, SEC. it's important. Uh, it's not like yeah. an election or anything. No. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I don't, I don't look, if, if that could have happened, then here, just ask yourself this question. If any proxy person uh, any proxy fighter would have this much difficulty if that could be so easily uh, rigged. Uh, then ask yourself how Nelson Peltz got on the board of Procter & Gamble and Wendy's and some of these other places. Uh, I mean, he's, right. he's done this a multitude of times. And every one of these companies, the board of directors, would have obviously had just as much, uh, just as much desire not to have Nelson Peltz kick one of their own people off. And they would have done, they would have tried the same thing. So, right. you know, it is what it is. Well, it kind of, draw, it, it hits me as funny in this sense, because I have a feeling that it's all, I mean, clearly it's all about politics now, because I, I have a feeling like 10 years ago, had Bob faced somebody like Nelson in a completely different world, mm -hmm. he, I don't think he would have been as resistant to Nelson, but he would have done it more quietly. Like the last thing he would have wanted was a public battle like this but them i mean they just did the same stupid thing with uh florida right like so this is what i'm saying at this point i feel like i don't know who their lawyers are but their lawyers have got to be a bunch of woke idiots at this point that's all i can say because disney's yeah because Iger yeah. is just completely insane with the way he's handling this like publicly this is becoming more and more of a problem if you ask me because it, it's going to start getting out to the normies like yeah. Disney well, cannot be this is. under fire. Yeah, it is. But I mean, they don't quite understand. I, I'm even still trying to wrap my head around all this. And that's why I'm glad you're here with us this morning to help, you know, break a lot of it down. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is kind of a something like, I can't believe at this point that Iger just hasn't go. Okay. I got to I got to treat this like a businessman. And I'm sure Mikey is going, yes, this is what I've been trying to say all the time. You know, like in the background here. It's like, I mean, because the moment this guy came on the scene, I'd have been like, okay, I want to keep this guy out of the news, but I also want to keep him happy, right? Because yeah. he's a huge investor. And like you just said, this guy gets on boards for a reason. And they're acting like he's some kind of antichrist or something. Right. It's like, what do you think he's going to do? Like, he yeah. wants to just simply come in and make money. And they have no way of kind of trying to paint him in any kind of bad light that's working. And yeah. I don't understand the resistance here, I guess is my main question. Because at this point, if I was in in his in bob's shoes i would not want this problem like if he's one of my bigger investors or at least represents some of my bigger investors i would want this guy happy i would want to try and work with him in some way shape or form this is, I, i've never but seen this bob's in business ego. before no it's it's ego it's all remember this is all about bob Iger. we make the joke this is not the walt disney company anymore it's the bob Iger company 
And Bob Iger wants right. to have the people on the board that he personally handpicks that he knows will either agree with him 100% of the time or that he can easily manipulate into doing so. That's what Bob wants. And you get one person on that board who's going to come in and push back and upset the apple cart. Then you have to start worrying about, well, are other board members going to start listening to Peltz's good ideas instead of what I have to say? And that's what he's most concerned about. But this is really about his ego. Bob Iger doesn't like to lose. He's always right. Everything he's done is perfect. I mean, you listen to like we covered when he did the thing with New York Times at the Deal Book Summit a couple of months ago. And he's sitting there talking about how I did this and I did that. And I came in, I had to save the company at a difficult time. Another cut and paste language into Lucas's uh, remarks. Uh, I, you know, I'm here to create long-term uh, shareholder value. Another cut and paste remark into that, into the George Lucas thing. I, you know, he talks about himself like he is the savior of Disney and Disney is broken and lost without him. Uh, and, and Bob Chapek was nothing more in his words than a quote, 11 month interruption uh, for, for Iger. Uh, and then when he's asked about Chapek, he pivots to, well, you know, it wasn't just me who thought that that was a mistake. We at the board felt like he just it's so disingenuous. He basically wants mm -hmm. to take credit for everything that was wonderful at Disney. And every time that somebody asks him about a problem at Disney, he pivots and points to somebody else. Well, I had nothing to do with that. That was this and that. It's, I mean, it's just, it's the, it's right. the classic. He wants to pass the buck and the classic the... sociopath, the classic egomaniac. Yeah. Speaking so. of, we have Paul Chato here. <laughs> yeah, I had stuff to do today. No worries, brother. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. How's uh, Valiant Six and yourself? Well, we're getting an education from Mr. Valiant Renegade here as he's taking Always. us through the, the recent proxy slash uh, Disney news that's going on over there uh, with Bob and the gang. You know, just a, just a fun, fun day uh, talking about all the lawsuits and accusations being thrown about. And I guess the biggest part of what we just learned that you might find interesting is that Nelson uh, Peltz has a better chance than we kind of thought. At this point, and this might well, be that why was a question Bob I is asked acting last week. so desperate. Yeah. Well, I had a video out this morning, Paul. Um, and again, everybody can go watch it. Uh, I might have to head out in a few minutes, uh, but you know, keep watching Midnight's Edge. Go check it out after the show here. Um, but apparently, somebody has leaked to the Wall Street Journal that Peltz is actually ahead in the vote count right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, uh, that's where we are. Well, there was one, of the one uh, notice by one of the, um, what do you call it, consultants out there that the Disney board needs a variety of voices. Some, some. That was probably ISS. I think it was, yes. Institutional shareholder services. They're the largest proxy advisory firm out there. And just That's for everybody's what it edification. Was. So just real quick, folks, with mutual fund companies, they're busy managing assets. You're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars collectively of assets that mutual fund companies manage. That's their job. The CFAs, the chartered financial analysts that run those mutual funds, their job is just to pick stocks or pick bonds or you know get whatever kind of return that fund, whatever the goal of that fund is to do. They can't possibly also keep up or it's less efficient for them to also keep up with thousands and thousands of different publicly traded companies that they own custodially on behalf or manage on behalf of their clients, the average people like you and me, um, they can't possibly keep up with thousands and thousands of, of, of sh uh, board member votes, you know, who to vote for, for this company and that company. They got to do that a thousand times a year. They don't have, yeah, tell own... me about it. I mean, my yeah. advisor won't let anyone in unless they got a half a mil. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, these mutual funds, they farm this out to companies that do nothing but constantly monitor and research the candidates that are on all these thousands of different publicly traded right. boards. That's what ISS does. That's what Glass Lewis does. ISS is the biggest uh, one out there. Glass Lewis, the second biggest. So everybody like Vanguard, BlackRock, uh, American Funds, uh, go on T. Rowe Price, Fidelity, all these guys, they all rely on and pay big bucks to people like ISS to advise them on how to vote. And they do that because it's the fiduciary responsibility of these mutual fund companies to cast votes on behalf of their clients, 
uh, that they whose assets they manage. So that that's why that's why when these things come out, when ISS made this look. We're good with, you know, we're, we don't, we think Jay Rasulo might be a little bit too abrasive with Bob Iger. Not that Rasulo would be, but it might piss off Bob Iger too much is kind of what they're saying. But we're all for Nelson Peltz, and we think you guys should vote for Nelson Peltz. People like even BlackRock and Vanguard are going to take, take notice of that. You have to. You have to. Because it's your fiduciary responsibility, and that's what you're paying these people to do. Well, also, right. if you are the middle, if you're the fund manager... You don't want to caught, get caught with your pants down. Mm -hmm. they, 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 then, then they're able to point to this consultancy firm and said, "Look, we've followed their guidance." That's it. Um, and there you go. So it, yep, it, right. it, it makes good. So that's that's interesting. Indeed. Well, before before we lose balance here, we got a few more super chants that are specifically to the topics at hand. Yeah, I saw a couple. Um, I was going to ask you, Gerald Compass. Uh, sends in ten dollars and says, "I ain't gonna burn up a million dollar pump for no fish." Oh, that was for the uh, <laughs> Lewis Gossett Jr. Man, I love that. I I'm sorry. I know Jaws three is like a guilty pleasure of mine. Uh, Gladiator sends in fourteen South African rand. Says uh, Valiant Renegade think Iger will resign if Peltz wins a seat. That's a good no. question. No, he won't. Um, he he's 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 too. He loves being in his position of power too much. He's not going to go anywhere. Um, he's going to stay there. I think if 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 Iger were to resign, and I guess it depends on when you're talking about, but it's not mm -hmm. like, well, okay, Wednesday, if Peltz wins, on Thursday, Bob Iger says, peace out. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Uh, and Because that that would be a humiliating uh And I agree with you, he's not, defeat. but yeah. I got to ask from this angle, Valiant, uh, this is something I've noticed that's been an uptick in, in the talks as we've moved along here. I've noticed all of a sudden they've talked more about his successor. His successor has come up quite a bit. Do you think that's part of this? Iger's successor? Yes. Well, that's, that's, been... what this, that's what this whole thing is about. The biggest reason that Peltz decided to engage the second time was because Bob Iger lied to him and everybody else last year. When, when, when Peltz said, okay, we'll withdraw from the proxy fight, um, Disney has conceded uh, most of what we were asking for, meaning that they're promising to restore some kind of dividend before the end of 2023. They did, albeit meager one by comparison to what they used to have. But that's fine. You got to start somewhere. Um, and then the other big thing was, or the cost cutting was another big thing. Bob Iger did some cost cutting this year, billions of dollars more. But the big one was the succession. And Bob Iger at that point, this time last year said, the succession committee is well underway and we're doing this and we'll have a successor and that's at the top of our list and nelson pelt said okay bob take your word for it three months later or four months later after pelts withdrew from the proxy fight what happened bob Iger is sitting down at the sun valley conference in idaho with cnbc just an hour after it was announced that the board of directors re-extended Iger's contract for two more fucking years so it was he knew he knew he was lying to everybody he knew he was lying to 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 nelson peltz i think when that happened um and that pissed nelson off something terrible and that's why he's back that's the biggest reason he's back and let me tell you even the people that have been defending bob Iger out there in the media have either straight up said it or they hint at the fact that, yeah, you know, the succession thing isn't going the way it should be. So, uh, yeah, that's that's probably uh, that's Nelson Peltz's best argument right now. And and I think it is. And I think that's a big reason why people are mm. saying, OK, we got to put him on the board because that might actually that might actually get this thing. And you notice this year, what is Bob Iger talking about again? Oh, yeah, we got the succession committee going. We're deep into this now. It's like, well, what happened when you said that last year? We heard the same mm -hmm. song and dance a year ago. And you lied to everybody. Now, are we getting the same lie again now in 2024? Are we, are we lying about this again, Bob? I, which is, I don't know. Which is also why I thought it was kind of silly for Nelson to be like, oh, no, I don't want, I'm not coming after Bob's job. And I like, like that stupid thing he said last week, even though I agreed with everything else he was saying, it was just like, okay, I wouldn't well, even he, went to there. He had to say that. Well, he has exactly. to, but it's, he didn't have to say anything, actually. He just didn't even have to address Bob Iger. He well, just he's talk been about asked about a that a number of times. Like, Peltz has been directly asked a number of times, are you looking to fire Bob Iger if you get on the board? And he said no. 
And he's not. And even and, and people got their panties in a wad last week after it was discovered that Tryon withheld all of their votes for Bob Iger's board seat. They 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 cast a ballot and they didn't they they withheld a vote for Iger. And they say, well, what about this? You lied about it. And technically, no, they didn't, because Bob Iger doesn't need a seat on the Disney board to be CEO. And it's probably better if Iger's not on the board right Correct. now because Correct. they're trying to find his successor. And he's going to have undue influence on that. Run the company. Nobody's going to fire you from the CEO position, but that doesn't mean you need to be on the damn board. Well, so, I mean, if if Peltz's requirement was that a succession process needed to be instigated, that's not firing Iger per se. Right. That is wanting a process you're voting for the process and that's a very big that's a big difference mm -hmm. yeah it is um I, like i said i there's i don't see bob Iger's contract being terminated early because number one it would cost disney like, shareholders way too much yeah. and and who else is going to run the place right now i mean who else right. knows anything yeah. i mean really no, i think gonna... what nelson's bigger concern is is him leaving eventually and he should have put it that way is like no, the my big he should have said, look, Bob is Bob. My bigger concern is the succession of power here, and the fact that that's what he's talking. Things about. have grown, yeah. grown so. However, you want to put it from there, you know, to the point where you know he's the points he's made. But anyway, chaos sonic before we because I want to get to these before we lose you. Uh, it says isn't BGG giving cease and desists despite they? Oh, this is for the black girl gamers. We'll, hold, we'll girl hold on gamers. to that. We'll hang on to that. We'll come back to that chaos sonic. Uh, Mexican Iron Man says, "Was I was on Doomcock's show last night, and on my monitor feed showed there were two pro Iger, pro Disney votes." Rands at. I've not seen one of these yet, but I, I I haven't been on online much today either. Obviously, so I don't see the ads because I'm in the middle premium, of Doomcock's so. show. See, and yeah. that's the other thing is I did have that uh, free thing of it until just like literally like yesterday it, it ended. So mm. now I'll start seeing ads again. So that's probably why I hadn't seen any to this point. I just thought of that. That's interesting. Just kind of like when we get the Star Trek ads and now we have their video game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's their sponsor? <laughs> Go figure. Can't beat them. Join them. Right. <laughs> Action Com sends in five and says, Valiant Renegade, is it uh, Pelts trying to wear is Pelts trying to wear down Iger and his allies, making Iger defend his position too costly? The juice not worth the squeeze. Well, that's part of it. Sure. Um, um, and, and when you're getting support of a, a lot of folks that truly matter i mean look bob Iger is getting the the big names of like jamie diamond but most people don't know who jamie diamond is lucas though a lot of people know obviously know who george lucas is but pelts is getting people like iss those right. are the ones that really matter because that's the institutionals 99.99 percent of people watching this program probably never heard of iss before now but people like me know exactly who the hell they are and the people who manage mutual funds know exactly who the hell they are um, and those are the people that matter. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're we also the people who conquered Iraq. I mean, they're basically like big <laughs> buttloads of votes at once, right? Is what yes, my I got the ISIS joke. <laughs> yeah. And then we got Chaos Sonic One, who does have something on this point. It says the irony of Bob's ego is that it's the reason why Disney is in the situation to begin with. That's it. Enjoy the legacy you ruined yourself, Bob. Yeah. Well, who doesn't have an ego at that level? I, I, I don't, it's redundant to even use that word. It's true. I, I agree with you, Paul, but like this, I think also goes to a point I was making earlier where, well, you were just here, so you probably heard it, which, where basically I don't understand the resistance to Pelts. Like I would be trying to wine and dine and 69 him at this point just to make him happy, regardless of what we do on the other end, which may be why Pelts is so pissed because I think that's what he did to him last time. It, um, he's the the resistance is that it's a rubber stamp um uh uh, uh debulled board mm -hmm. that's the problem this yep. is not a proper board no it's bob Iger's board right. at the bob Correct. Iger company yeah 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 it's there and, and in fact uh you know the sec would probably have problems with this board if there wasn't so much money and power and people all wrapped up in it they're not doing their job the ceo works at the behest of the board but that's mm -hmm. not happening yeah. here no
but this is what the shareholders voted for. To be fair, this is this is elections have consequences, y'all. Correct. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. So then moving along here, we've got uh, Horseradish Power who sends in five pounds. So some people collect coins, some stamps. Disney collects lawsuits, a rather expensive hobby, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Disney expansion. Does. Yeah, and Disney expansion that doesn't have lawsuits. Is uh, Iger getting a bigger shower? Yeah. Well, I don't know about the bigger shower, but I think the real point here, Paul, is that I mean, publicly they're being just hey, pummeled. Listen, a- a- Apple is uh, on the DOG radar now. DOJ radar. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So that's that's pretty big, <laughs> although mm-hmm. although their accusations were hilariously. Uh, it, they went overboard with some of those things. It was kind of silly. Yeah. Uh, Hyperguyver two says on Wednesday, take a shot every time he mentions Black Panther and Coco. Okay. <laughs> You'll be dead. Oh. I can't. I don't know if I'd do that. <laughs> I'm and then horse ra- a second. Yeah. 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 No worries. We got a couple more here for you, real quick. If you can't hold off, uh, Horse Radish Power sends in two and says, "Reminder: Disney is the OCP of Hollywood." Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I made that. I made that joke with with the Florida yep. situation. I like that. They thought it was uh, RoboCop two. And that they could take Detroit private. That's what they were that, trying to do with like RCID. Yeah. 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 Gladiator uh, sends in 14 South African Rands and says, does Jay Rusulio, Rusulo enter the race for CEO? Mm. Interesting. Let's just say I I don't have, I mean, if, if Jay doesn't make it to the board, that's fine. But yes, I've thought about this. I would not be at all surprised if Here's uh, a- Peltz gets on there. That name is going to get brought up. Here's a great question. Uh, Packing Protons for 10 bucks. Thank you so much. It says, we had an internet outage at work starting from the beginning here. So, hope this wasn't covered. Who do you think leaked these results and why Disney seems surprised? So, this is a good question. Because as you were talking about here, just telling Paul, like, where do you think that these, uh, no, this, we, uh, Wall Street Journal did not from? say, but the most likely place would have been, uh, the, the, the third party firm that would have been, uh, weird. Seeing this. Or somebody inside. Which the it's that, like I said, it's this is not common. Uh, but yeah, somebody somebody put it out. Somebody leaked it to somebody who told somebody else, and somebody else called the Wall Street Journal. Uh, that's kind of I don't know if I happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say unless you have a, I wouldn't go too far with speculation on that. But yeah. I wouldn't at all be surprised if um, once this is all over, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the SEC does make some inquiries onto this one. Kalekioki sends in two and says, if Peltz does get a seat, how much say would he have? He'd have the same say as every other member in the room. Uh, I mean, he may be one vote out of 13 or whatever at that point, but still, you got to understand, I keep saying this, his voice is going to be so much more differentiated from every other voice on that board, and that's what Bob is worried about, is that he's going to be able to convince other people that there might be a better way to do this. So, yeah. And and also, he'll be he'll be privy to far more information than he has been to this point. Uh, he will be lawfully entitled to, um, hmm. and that's going to make him doing his job even more fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they do investigate this leak because that is kind of a mm-hmm. faux pas of sorts. Kalekioki also sends in two and says he he is just one guy. Are you guys live on Rumble right now? By the way, no, we're not. Uh, Andre didn't have it set up for today. Sorry about that. Yep. Uh, but. Uh, this is one more for you, and then we can let you roll. And I okay. want to thank you again hey, for this morning, by the way. Does uh, this affect the Disney credit ratings? Um, no. I mean, you're talking about, I guess you, you're asking about the lawsuits. No. Yeah. Uh, no, it shouldn't. I mean, it, it, those, those are done by uh, independent bond rating agencies like Standard & Poor's, Moody's, Fitch, AM Best. Um, that's, a, that's a totally different ball game. So, um, Before we do lose you. Uh, we got Chaos Sonic here who says, I'd rather have Mexican Iron Man as CEO instead of Bob, ruin legacy Iger. At least he can ser- serve rabbit chickens to his supporters instead of showers. Absolutely. And then real, real quick, because I know you have to go. But this is something that is kind of in your uh, in your yeah. basement. So uh, Chaos got... Sonic 1 is uh, brings up here, isn't uh, Black Girls Gaming giving cease and desist despite that they put themselves in this predicament and Dark yeah. King also points out that we'll have to rename it from the Streisand effect back to the big black girl, black girl gamers effect. So yeah, yeah, you're kind of in the middle of all this shit before you head out here. I know you guys yeah. are going to get deep into this on the Sunday show. 
Um, well, we'll which start from a part of or not, I don't show. know, but yeah. Yeah, on this okay, so on the Sunday show, what we're we got a lot to cover. We're gonna have, I'll tell you right now, uh Cabrutus will be there. Sweet Baby Inc. Detected will be on the show uh on Sunday. Oh wow uh, for the first hour, and we're gonna discuss his whole going on with that. The the next two hours of the show, obviously we're gonna be diving into a lot of this Disney stuff. We might talk a little bit about if we've got time uh, with Godzilla. So Tom, yeah, you can hop in for that for that portion of it, please. Uh and we are going to be discussing the cease and desist uh, letter. We're going to start there. We're going to show people some bits and pieces of it. Uh, we're going to have a conversation. But because we have so much on Sunday, uh, we're, we've actually, I'll tell you right now, there will be a special uh, Monday show as well uh, that we will go even into more depth uh, of that uh, and our response. So um, awesome. stay tuned for that one, uh, but that'll be Monday, same time as the Sunday show, 5 Central, 6 Eastern. Um, we're going to have a lot of, uh, the plan is to have quite a few gamers on that panel, uh, big gaming channels. Uh, side scrollers uh, will be there. Uh, hopefully uh, Jeremy, Geeks and Gamers, will be able to make it. I've got to call him in just a, in, in just a moment. <laughs> Actually, I did it twice this week. I've called him in the middle of live streams, and twice this week he picks up the phone during the live stream and answers the call on the air and makes me feel like an idiot because I am. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking more about that. Black Girl Gamers uh, has, has made some very funny requests. Let's just say that. And threats, let's say. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. We discussed so we, that a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, so. we'll address that uh, Sunday and Monday. So y'all stay tuned for that. Sounds fun. Awesome. So, so we can't wait to hear yeah. about that. And thank you, Valiant, once again for hopping in here and giving us all this insight on the Disney news today. We appreciate it, brother. Yep. Thanks so much. See y'all later. Have, Have a good, good night. So yeah, the, the Black Girl Gaming thing, it's just funny as hell. Funny as hell. I, uh, I saw a note on Twitter where they've actually issued a legal document. Yes. That's what the Valiant was referring to. They have now gotten a cease and desist over at that park place. So yeah, they, they went through with a cease and desist. Uh, so that's the latest update on that. For those who don't know the full story, this goes back to a couple of days ago when black girl gaming had put out a post on X saying that they were consulting a lawyer about seeking, uh, legal actions against anybody, uh, sharing the story from that park place. And now they have actually gotten a cease and desist. And speaking of cease and desist, someone who does that to me quite often, Andre. Finally here. Uh, yeah. For being you just late. missed Valiant. <laughs> yeah. I, I was uh, uh, glad to see him here and uh, looking greatly forward to the upcoming dreams with both the uh, uh, black girl gamers and uh, their stupid cease and desists, which yeah. It's going to be a great example of F around and find out because that's exactly what they did. That's going to be a it's like they've never empire. heard of the freedom of the press before, have they? <laughs> like, no, I think they, it's more. I think they've heard about it, but I don't think that they knew who they were going up against <laughs> and the resources that can be pulled from there. Right. That's what I think is a real issue that they yeah. probably just thought that. Uh, these are just some random nobodies that are going to be terrified by a cease and desist and go away and never talk about this company ever again. Right. And that's not what's going to happen. I, of course, I look forward to, to covering this and breaking down the, the original story in great, great detail. Now, does anyone know what is in the cease and desist? What specific things they're trying to, they're, they're demanding? No, that's what I think they're going to go over Sunday. Yeah, they'll go. They'll go over that. So we uh, we we leave that for uh, for for them uh, to to break down. But I'm sure it's going to be entertaining. From what I understand, it was f very extensive, and it was far out of reach of what you would normally do in a season this exist uh, desist. I do have that impression, but for details, we'll wait for for Valley and Stream. I'm trying to worse. remember what it was that riled them up. From uh, Park Place. Park Place just re reprinted stuff from Black Girl Gamers. That yeah, yeah, that's the worst site. thing. That's uh, that's why everyone is so freaked out with, uh, for instance, the lips of on TikTok on <laughs> on X. When really all they do is they just say, "Here, look at what uh, what these crazy leftists are saying." They don't add any context or anything like that. Just 
or, or, or don't editorialize, don't take anything out of context. I mean, just like show, here's a TikTok video of these crazy people and how they brag about uh, brainwashing your kids or something. It's the same thing here. All they did was that they basically showed the CEO of the company bragging about their hiring practices and screw all white people. I'm paraphrasing, but that was the gist of it. Yeah. And, uh, no white I, person I, I, is going to come work for I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding any of these entities including sweet baby inc outside of the pressures of dei on corporations essentially what they're saying is that the ford fiesta is racist uh, it, pretty much yes yes and if it's yeah I mean, and you, if it's, you, uh, if you it's, choose uh, to it's... buy it or not that's there isn't a single game out there that is be forced on people to be purchased no, that's right. This is where consumers have the power and why, uh, why right. consumers now need to stop buying all of these games that, for one thing, comes from Xbox. If it's from Xbox, then don't buy it anyway. Well, I just and, saw that, the marketing yeah, that, director. Like yeah, I'm, I'm, why would you buy an Xbox game now? They've, they potentially have just Bud Lighted themselves. Well, actually, they did that five years ago. It's only now we know. Did they? Okay. Yeah, that was the point of the video. Uh, this was five years ago, so every video, every game put out on the Xbox the last five years, not every like indie little thing, but every proper released AAA game have been subjected to this for the last five years. And funnily enough, Xbox gamers have been complaining that there haven't been any good Xbox game for about Correct. five years. This is why they're tanking so badly in sales compared to both PlayStation and Nintendo. It's not a, it's not a coincidence so yeah they did bud light themselves but they did it five years ago only now is when we know that's the difference before we just saw the shitty end product and no one knew why now we do know why and and you know i i mean i have nothing against the gamer culture that black girl gamers uh, have created for themselves i i don't why 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 would anyone care i mean I, I remember having a LAN, LAN party for, uh, not Doom, the pre, it might have been Doom, but back in the day when you actually had to be in the same room and everyone had to be connected over Ethernet, right? You, there was no internet that you could have a group game. So you had a LAN party. And and the kind of people who were playing the games were not the people in the uh, in the party pictures, the party videos at Black Girl Gamers. But ha have your own land party. Like I, I'm not, I'm not getting where the animosity. Like it seems to be one way. No, oh, of course. I, I'm not, I'm not understanding it. The consumer, you know, caveat emptor: buy the game that you want, don't buy the game that you don't want. No, that's the and that's the best thing that uh, that gamers can do. And uh, when there are fewer fewer triple A games which which are made to appeal to you, then don't buy them. I mean, a big problem with with gamers is that they are too uncritically buying and supporting all the crap that's shoved down their throats. Pre get pre pre buying these things before they have any idea what's going to come or anything that has to stop. Gamers have their have their responsibility for this, for for supporting things that for way longer than they than they should have. I mean, moviegoers. It took a long time, but they finally caught on, which is what we're seeing at the box office. We're seeing this thing is in video game sales as well, but it really takes a lot of bad press and horrendous word of mouth for to really tank a game. Whereas I think it, now, especially with like modern day AAA games, I think they all need to tank until it's deserved that they or proven that they deserve not to i think this part, runs part, deep. part of it could be the rise of multiplayer multiplayer games seem to be outnumbering this is not market driven this is not driven by any kind of no no demand whatsoever but the idea of a safe space you know i I've, I've played online games with other gamers and and it can get very salty on there but on the other hand, for the most part, nobody is identifying themselves. They've got a handle, and you're either competent or you're not. Uh, you know, I, I you know, the, yeah, the things. You know, if uh, if you're uh, not covering your flank properly, you're gonna get you're gonna get a, a stream of expletives 
thrown yeah. thrown yeah. at you for uh, no. No, not, no, not course, properly managing yeah. your resources. And obviously, no one is against the uh, if, if like black girl gamers or sweet baby ink if they want to make a DEI game and stuff like that, and by all means do. But, but make it for their target audience. That's one thing. Uh, make them this super duper safe space and put it on the market and let the market decide. And if that market is the 5% of, of gamers or 4% even, which actually are black girl gamers, then cool. Make a game to, to, to tailor to that 4% of the market. But when you take a triple A game that is supposed to appeal to 90% of the market, and you make it to make sure that it's a safe space for the 4% of the market, then in the process, those are the 4% of the market it's going to appeal to, and you're going to rule out pretty much everyone else. This is a mistake that they're making. What about the deaf gaming market? At least Spider-Man handled that. You know. Well, that's something that all games actually do. That I mean, that's the accessibility of it, too, to make sure that they that to make sure that the game well you have the same thing with computer code and everything like that i know i was being that's everything yeah so that's kind of like little... not the issue that's not the issue it's the accessibility part of it no i know i, mean, I know i know it's just making you, have, you have too many cutscenes. i mean to me that's a problem because like every time i've tried to play a modern game the past what 15 years honestly it usually lasts for five minutes before i throw the remote away and disgust the hell is this usually because i can't never get to the game you saw all these freaking cutscenes and training levels and everything like that. Just, just now you know my frustration go. with modern gaming. Well, the yeah. the other thing too, and which is what they might be talking about, and it might not necessarily be attached to race, is that if you go to Battlefield Online, there's not a lot of women playing, and um, I, I I just get the sense that the ultra competitive side of these kinds of games like battlefield uh csgo um it, it's just i mean it, it's it's there's i don't know you got to be really good and and most women don't get themselves up or have the interest perhaps here i'm getting myself i think, it's, I think it's that uh, any woman that yeah. wants can compete with the absolute best of course guys. there's no freaking there is there. no it's impediment just of the interest I just think, yeah, there's little lack, there's there's little overlap with women who are interested in that kind of gaming. Because I'm sure, like six, that's her favorite kind of gaming, right? She, you're all into like Call CS of Duty, all that stuff, all that stuff. <laughs> I think she well, stepped you, away. I'm not even <laughs> listening to your conversation. Oh, sorry. That's how much I'm, I'm you, do it. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you have to watch the way women gamers who can't compete. Again, this is a terrible thing to say on Twitch that they get they get lambasted it's not pretty look you know it, it's it's always well, anyone gets of, lambasted it doesn't matter I, say, I don't think it really matters like in gamers i think are a lot like comic book nerds and anybody else but like you just said you're talking about going into a room that's just full of flack right oh. you're going to expect to hear some four letter and three letter oh. words and if that, you're if you're if you're not up to if you're not able to handle that shit well then get the fuck out of there Go play some Animal Crossing then, because well, that's what like, I, I think. I'm that's sorry. I. I think that's the point. Is that I think they want a CS:GO that is cut off from all the toxic males. I think that's the um, the secret message that they're trying to convey. And you know what it, they have misunderstood? Then they have mistaken a feature for a bug. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because that, because that, the toxicity to which you refer, I do believe that when you have gamers who share that particular interest and stuff like that, and you get them in a room, and the conversation is about to to let free, that's what's going to happen. It is not something that can be fixed. Then you then you'd have to rule out those people, and then you rule out your market. And that's kind of like what we see they do. They try to make a safe space out of it, yeah. and then they lose their audience. Basically, that's exactly what I'm getting at. I mean, really, if you look at it, it's like you almost have to look at, at it like real war, right? Like, if you were really going, like, look at the scene in Aliens as they're prepping to leave, right? That's a good example of what these games, if you can't handle that, they get the hell out. 
right? I'm sorry. Go find and make your own little safe space then. If they want to do that, fine. That's what they're doing. Cool. Nobody's stopping you, right? But if you want to come in and play with the big boys, you're going to have to be able to handle some shit. And, and I the think way it that, is. that could be <laughs> what their argument is. But and it's a false oh, argument. Shit. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. Like I, I, yeah, I completely, exactly. Because once you change that, it's like war, right? Like I'm saying, that's my whole analogy is like, sure, you could be all whatever and be nicey nice. But guess what? Aliens aren't very nice when they come at you and they're going to eat you. Okay. So <laughs> like, I mean, I, I'm just using it as an analogy here, but it's the same kind of thing in these rooms, right? Like Andre said, nobody's going to put up with you not knowing what you're doing when you're playing one of these games half the time. And right. So, game, I mean, I would love you know. to ask, honestly, uh, someone from Black Girls Gamers, this, this, this one quote, are you a black woman looking for a safe space to game and connect with other gamers, streamers, developers, and more? Honestly, without sarcasm and, and without being an asshole, I'd really like to know where they come up with that line and what they mean by it and, and what in their mind is the solution. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I'm their solution is to, but I'd rather not interpret that line. I'd rather let them tell me. Well, they did. They told you exactly what they wanted. Paul, did you not see the tweet? I, oh uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If, if that that's saying, is, it's not like they're hiding their agenda at all. So they have that made it tweet very, is really the clear. answer to that question or that statement then okay then it all makes sense and there's an yeah. easy way to fix that and then that is do exactly what they're doing and that is make everything for one small sect group of people and like andre's pointing out which takes you back around to the beginning of the whole thing which is you can do that but guess what you're going to sacrifice everything and everything there is about game when yeah, I say every, sacrifice everyone else it's done and that means you, you you think the crash of 83 or whatever was bad Psh, you ain't seen shit because like Andre said, that is, and that's one thing I do, you know, constantly bring up is that the gaming community is a community that can change shit on a drop of a dime. Unlike us with movies and all this other stuff, anime, all these other things in the world that have such broad audiences, not so easy to convince a large swath of people to just go, you know what? I'm not going to fucking buy that game. Or you know what? I'm going to support that game, which is exactly what we've seen come out of the gaming community time and time again. And what have they done? They've panicked. They have fucking panicked every time. That's exactly what we're seeing now. They're like worms that are underneath, you know, the craw of the, of the crow, just getting ready to twist and pull off their, you know, whatever end is their head, <laughs> you know, like at this point, that's where they're at right now. And they're scared. They're desperate because they know that this is the end. This is the final re that I've been talking about all this time. This is exactly what the final re is where they're throwing out baseless lawsuits that will go absolutely fucking nowhere for instance that's one example where they're yelling at buildings like we're seeing in building and shit like, like that's where we're at we're in the final re now and it's ironic that it's happening to games first but i'm not surprised because the game community goes yeah i'm gonna support hogwarts legacy or they're like no i'm not gonna support suicide squad right and they can do that and and boom right shit has to change because there's money at stake here lots of money that my big concern is just how much involvement corporations have in all of this the 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 people with the money actually and a lot of money and uh... and why and i mean until they have chosen to back out of it corporately because internally they've made this decision not just in regards to gaming so i I'd like to be as positive as you are, Tom, but uh, I'm the stranglehold, uh, the DEI, CRT, QT philosophy has on so many things out there is a real worry to me. Yeah. I, I don't see it disappearing anytime well, soon. Well, you, you are right, of course, because here's the thing. There is no market demand for Black Girl Gamers, Sweet Baby Inc., or any of the others. There's no market demand for them. They're, they they exist because Xbox that we know of have compelled right. them into existing by demanding that their developers use the services of some kind of uh, consultancy 
uh, company that delivers the kind of services they do as a condition in order to to release the games on on Xbox. And I'm sure that other companies have this as well. Xbox are the ones that we have see and we know have this. We don't know what PlayStation has. They may have something similar. For for all we know, we just know that Xbox has it. Now, of and course, it could be that no one else has it, and but but the but the developers. They make the game once, and they make it to the most restrictive, and then everyone else has to suffer. I was going to say, this sounds more like it's on the level of the developers. But just to clarify what I'm saying, when I'm talking about the final re, we're far from the final re when it comes to entertainment. I'm talking about in the gaming industry. I think we finally hit the final re. Yeah. Well, we're not in the final re there until, as as, uh, as Paul says, until it's the, the platform manufacturers, the ones who deliver or decide which games go on which platform. Like, for instance, Steam. Who owns Steam? I'm uh, not sure, but Valve. Yeah. Who owns Valve? Uh, Gabe Newell. <laughs> okay. And, well, and uh, does he own it alone? or? Uh, who, the, the, who I don't think any... That? Valve is... Uh, I was going to say that. I don't think no one has else has their hooks into Valve. Okay, good. That's because the, the honestly, that's the honestly, that. Andre, I've been seeing, and this is you know just kind of vicariously through my kid and other people. Steam is kind of taking over everything, right? Like people uh -huh. don't give a shit about any of the other stuff anymore, and it's because they have ease of access and it's everything you want, and they have the community there, and you don't have to worry about cross platforming and all that other bullshit. And look, I'm not a fucking gamer, so I get it, um, but I just see that there's a big change coming in the gaming community side of things, and. This is the kind of change I'd like to see elsewhere. I, I would yeah. love, I, quite possibly, it's going to start from gaming and entertainment and moving their way out. But I, I have a, a supplier that I work with that goes through millions of dollars worth of our purchases or, or whatever. And uh, I got a support email and this individual had pronouns. And I went, I actually emailed them back. Yeah, we'll set up a meeting, but really, pronouns? And the person emailed me back, and they said, "Yeah, we've all been forced to add them." Oh, for Pete's sake! Yeah, th so that's what I mean. That's depressing. It's fucking I've, depressing. I've gotten, I've got also gotten like such emails from like sponsors and stuff like that that are like forced to do it from some nefarious corporate directive. It's not a choice. It's like nope. the same thing. Developers here, they're not choosing. No, and we were all told at the beginning of this it was going mm -hmm. to be personal choice. Yeah, and this yeah, is that was why a lie, wasn't it? This, there was a lie, and which is at the I fought and argued with people about the benign nature of personal pronouns, and I said it's the thin edge of the wedge. <laughs> well, Dark King here sends in an Australian too and says Black Girl Gaming will help to pay for Valiant's new Ferrari. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but uh, let's hope we'll so. See. Uh, yeah, I hope for th that's kind of where I'm coming from. Is like I see this as I know it's a. I would not want to be dealing with this shit, but at the same time, you know what? Black girl gaming is like causing the stry sand effect upon themselves. And they're also causing um, guys like Valiant in that park place to get more notice. And look, that's a positive for people in our community. You know what so, they also do? I really, that? I really hate their name. Black girl gamers. Yeah. I really fucking hate it. Because every time we talk about it, I feel like I have to, I have to say, like, to any black girls in the audience, this is not about you. We're not talking about <laughs> you here. We are not talking about black girl well, gamers in general. We're talking about this particular commie entity. No one has anything about black girls doing, being gaming. Because that's what I really hate about this. Because then you have, like, this negative discourse uh, about There's a way to black fix that, Andre. Gamers. There's a way to fix that, but we can't do it. Not even six can do it. You have to be a black girl gamer to do it. You have to get out there and say, look, quit appropriating us. You don't yes, speak for I all agree. of us. I agree. I agree. That's exactly and what I've seen a few do that. So more power to them, and I hope they keep speaking up. That's exactly, exactly Polly. We're all the black women here. at. Exactly. Yeah. And black women usually ain't got no problem with saying, hold up, you don't speak for me. You know, like, yeah, and that's it. what needs to be done here because the rest of us need to kind of like hedge. Like, we, this has nothing to do with black girl gamers. No. It's this particular commie party that needs to go under, basically. And, and give them credit for being able to make, make, uh, make some money off of 
all these corporations willing to uh, uh, Actually, use you know them what? as a no. protective I rent. Them, yeah, I'm I will give them no Andrew. credit. When, when basically you have someone like Xbox that says you need to use a consultant company. Those are the five consultant companies and you have no other choice but to use them. Then there's very little innovation and not stuff only that, that true. into that yeah. not only that paul I, I i say we get called grifters all the time when shit like black girl gaming and that's a grift sweet baby ink exactly and i love it because uh, you know that i think i was tenille if i remember correctly who said it best in our chat it's literally the people who come in and break your window and then they sell you a new window yeah sure they create yeah, yeah. the problem but then they they charge you to fix it this is the commie way and then Chaos Sonic yeah. One says, "Don't forget to turn off your Xbox Game Pass. Don't let them get a penny till they char change." Yeah, I, I haven't. Ref yeah, and it's time to boycott Xbox. And I, I, I think so. Yes, I absolutely support that. Like the, the moment that they made this thing public, you know what that tells me? Because this is what they've been doing since two thousand. Yeah, the rot has been deep. Yeah, uh, but now that when they go public with this. And the, you also had like this tweet from the Xbox head of marketing, the thing that was retweeted and mocked, uh, mocked by Elon Musk, the, the one who was like, hey, uh, screw all the white people, where are all the black girl gamers at, or something like that, right? And, I don't remember and, the exact thing. That was the uh, Xbox marketing manager right now. They are doubling down on this. They, that's I, a I get that. now filled with activists. And, and if they're so proud of it, don't protect your x uh, your twitter x accounts if this yeah. is really what you're fighting for and you're proud of it then why are you running away and don't delete this... don't delete tweets and things if this is exactly what it is that you believe in yeah and this is coming as xbox is dying and oh, you yeah. have like reports that the, the sales in in europe yeah, are PS... so bad that a number of developers are considering skipping the Xbox altogether. Well, they, they bought Bethesda. It. They they have been trying to buy out studios. They they bought Bethesda, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you know when I knew they were in trouble, Paul, is when there was the the market was like there for the gaming when people were like paying thousands of dollars for like PS5s. But yet nobody gave a shit about the Xbox, and the Xbox was always pretty plentiful. Well, there's another reason for that is Xbox could never conquer japan that no. that is really ultimately the xbox's failures that they could not make a beachhead in in japan and my that's, issues that's with the xbox line. go back to more so with home media than anything and i'm sure you've heard me talk about this before so i'll keep it extremely brief but to me the whole thing with xbox is they've been trying to kill physical media for years like since well, that was a huge mistake on their part yeah. they they had a real jump on sony when they had the xbox online service and you just paid a yearly fee and it really was the innovator in that whole sphere what? and then the next xbox one i think it was where suddenly they wanted to become your set top box and that completely destroyed them well and that they was never the, recovered they never recovered from that and that was the evolution they were hoping for but what they did and this is where bill gates still was in play is they backed hd dvd for no other reason than to try and create a format war yeah but that wasn't what killed them what what no 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 but that's what lost respect for me is what i'm saying okay Paul. no yeah that's, that's what pisses what, me off from my angle because i'm not a gamer but, but what but they did was they destroyed home media playstation was smart they said we're a gaming console yeah. that's it now well, not only that they supported to... home media pardon me not only that they supported home media not just because sony was obviously no 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 I, I, but yeah, I, I understand that, but a lot of the media that Sony is supporting right now is mostly streaming. They're they're streaming yeah, that's services. Now. That's now yeah. and and then two different companies. Yeah, uh, I listen. My point we, is, we bought the Sony because we could play DVDs on it. Um, that was actually one of the reasons, and right, the Xbox yeah. wouldn't play DVDs. So. I, I think you're you. I mean, my main point where I'm coming from though is all the problems that they're having in Hollywood right now, and the reason why we can't have anything on physical media anymore. Why out all of it. The core of it all begins with that moment when Bill Gates said, you know what? Okay. I'm going to create a fucking format war and nobody adopted Blu-ray. Well, the, See, that was no, the no, I, I, yes. And, and that's true. The, they, that's there what was, I was that was a do, very yeah. bad moment in time 
to have a competitor to uh, DVD and Blu-ray. That that was a huge misstep, and I agree with you. But I mean, uh, uh, Microsoft didn't invent it; Toshiba did, and then they yeah. wanted to win no, no, the this is true. awards. This is true. That's but, because Microsoft they were the opportunists that basically said, "Ah, this is they wanted their this goal is where we can sabotage." And yeah, their goal right. was to make it all streaming, yeah. video we, yeah. and video. We did game. not yeah. need another beta versus VHS war at that time. But when you're caught in the middle of it, you don't really understand or see what the future implications were. But yeah, the the sales of hard media would have been way better if everyone just left it to DVD and Blu-ray. Well, and, and that's where Nintendo was smart. Well, we lost six. Yeah. I wanted her to stick around for Kong, but she had to. Yeah, it was a know. very well, exciting let's, uh, let's conversation. Let's move on. I'm sure we have a couple of suits. Anyway, yeah. You do. Yeah. No, yeah, but that's, yeah, that was my whole point on that. But uh, yeah. we got Horseradish Power here says, I'm surprised there's no Raspberry Pi specific games yet. <laughs> Seems to me they could become a great little platform. Untamped potential right there. Well, I mean, there are homebrew games. I mean, I guess you could kind of consider that. Well, you could you could consider the, uh, the uh, Steam Deck kind of a raspberry pi i mean it that, that, that there's your raspberry pi is the steam deck yeah yeah then we got bass player 2011 if you since in 1999 holy crap thank you, thank you. Is, that's why they're freaking out so much because unlike traditional media and gaming it's very easy to hit companies you don't like in the pocketbook i've been boycotting ea for well over a decade and i still have choices exactly and, and here's the thing and that's what i was getting at earlier is you guys can swing stuff real fast unlike a lot of other fan bases so yeah because even in, like look at star wars is a great example you still have infighting in star wars still after all this time there's still that's you know there's still those people that hang on desperately uh richard warring sends in five or 4.99 basically five dollars says i just bought that uh horizon forbidden west and i love the game play uh and when i see any of the cutscenes, i hate her oh uh, i haven't played this or anything so i don't know which uh oh i see okay yeah they've turned her into a lesbian uh, yeah, we're all lesbians confirmed. Yeah, they're all lesbians confirmed. Yeah, yeah very horizon zero them. dawn was a great game yeah. and then we've got uh chaos sonic who says uh cs go without toxic males basically kills the game you know, I mean, it's not so much about the toxicity. It's just about who does it appeal to, right? Like, I mean, exactly. I mean, that is the audience. The audience comes together. That is the conversation. You cannot change it. You can change it without the. You can change it by changing the audience. And then you no longer have a game. That's what makes it a feature and not a bug. And that's what goes along with everything we always talk about with movies and stuff too. Like Ghostbusters was a good example when they did what they did, or you know, with where they're trying to shift everything with everything else. It's like when you destroy what was originally there that already had a female fan base, right? They liked it because of what was there already. They don't want to be pandered to. So you're going to lose that original fan base and all you're going to be left with is just people who really aren't fans at the end of the day. That's the basics of it. Um, and then we've got uh fluffy Panda here who says, uh, Michael Jordan's, Jordan said it perfectly. Republicans buy sneakers too. You don't hear Nightwish tell fans only certain fans can listen to our music. <laughs> well, you had artists say shit like that. That's stupid. But Although yeah. I, I have seen Nightwish concert footage and it's pretty white. Although it's, <laughs> it's, it's all, you know, in the uh, 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 Arctic countries. I have been at Nightwish oh, concert. Oh, that's right. Concerts. You said that's can right. confirm. <laughs> it was, it's pretty, it's pretty white. I, uh, uh, yeah, like yeah, like heavy metal concerts, and especially like the more when you get into like symphonic power metal and black metal, it's not a very diverse audience. Let's put it that way, so, even for Norway. So I'm I'm thinking further along what you guys have now brought up, and something else dawned on me is is that streaming games tend to not have cached areas for different levels of individual skill some some there are some out there but you know something like battlefield where you're just thrown into with you know 30 other people uh, uh it doesn't doesn't really have that 
option. But I can now that I think about it, I can see why games like Helldiver are being targeted by these individuals and and the LGBT uh, community and well the trans community for not including trans flags in in the game. Uh, which is ridiculous, but I can understand now. Both both of you who don't don't know how Hell Divers works, you're not playing against other people. You're, you're playing against NPCs. Okay, so you can arrange for a group of same skill level people to stumble your way through the game. So you won't end up necessarily with one really killer person and three really useless duds. You can all be useless duds in a game like Hell Divers. Do you understand what I mean? So I can see why people who are targeting race and and uh, gender would target a game like Hell Divers because they're not seeing their representation in them, and it's not a game that actually revolves around um, uh, expertise. Although once the game you know kicks in, you, you can get your ass kicked because the NPCs are so so strong. Um, but I can see that where you know, we, you know as we all know. Uh, the critical uh, uh, critical social justice people have have bastardized Marxism from a class based struggle to a race based struggle, and right. and and a gender struggle. So they couldn't win on the class side, but it looks like they've made fabulous headway on the race and gender side. And that's what the that's what a game like Hell Divers points out is that they couldn't weigh, win on the skill side, which is I guess the you know, that's the class. You go into a game that requires a lot of skill, that's class level. So they can't attack that. But any game that allows for it's kind of a soft middle, they're going to attack that and accuse them of racism because they're not being involved because the game does not involve these people allowing them to see themselves in the games. So I can kind of see that, that, there's a similar fight going on in the gaming community as it is with, uh, you know, business at large. That's pretty heavy. I'm sorry to get it. It was no, but that's fine. <laughs> you're, oh, you're, no, that's that. your domain, man. So like, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. I'm accident. Seller, think about that more. Accident seller sends a 20 Norwegian Corona and says, Max are great for old school games. Hashtag doom. Hashtag emulation. Hashtag. Oh, yeah. NES. Yeah. yeah that's what I was thinking on the Mac. Before too about uh, nes before we got down another road is that nes also knows and understands how important physical media is for the most part because they know that's where the bread and butter is right and this is just the basics right i've always known that the to, the cost of the system is usually amortized through the games like that's the way the systems oh used yeah to be. you you give away the uh, shaver and you make it up yeah. in the blades exactly because in Sony's case, specifically like with the PS3, like that thing cost them a oh. fortune to make. Yes. A fortune. Like they those first, I don't know how many consoles yeah. it was, but for a while they were losing money on them. But they were oh, making the money back up. A ton of money. Like they but, lost about like 300 bucks, I think, per unit. I think it was like two to 300 bucks. I think you're right. But they would make that up in software, not just games, but Blu-rays and shit. And that's where bill gates coming in and fucking because it would have been a natural progression from dvd to blu-ray well they they got rid made. of the uh they had two processors in there one that would play playstation 2 games and then the playstation 3 games and that was one of the things that cost them so much money so yeah, once that's they why the later created, ones wouldn't do it once yeah. once they created a slimmer version that just completely cut out the entire playstation 2 emulate not emulation it actually had the chip in it uh they started making money even on the platform yeah. And then Horseradish Power says DEI didn't earn it. Indeed. My new one of my new favorite uh sayings there. And then we've got uh let's see here. I think this has to do with the gaming stuff. Yes, it does. Eula Brit sends in ten dollars. That's a new name, and welcome to the channel if you're new here. Uh we need to consider the possibility that people paying for this dumpster fire don't push this in spite of losses, but rather the objective might to be to get rid of games and movie culture. Um, yeah, well, partially that's kind of what they're going to end up doing in the end, I guess is kind of where I'm coming from. Um, cause like, I mean, that's the whole thing is like, you, you have a certain audience for something, right? Whether it's a war game, a fishing game, something like that, that's generally geared like hunting games that are generally geared toward guys. And if there are women that like that, they like what 
is geared towards guys about them, right? So if you keep changing those things, you're just not going to have an audience any fucking more. <laughs> so they're just going to be like, well, screw that. I'm going to go find something else, you know, and gamers will always find something else. There's tons of stuff out there. So, yeah. And why is it it's women that want to destroy our games? I don't know. Well, women, I think, have a problem against gaming because have you seen how many videos there are out there of women trying to get their attention of their men when they're trying to play games and shit? Well, that I mean, a good motivation right there, Paul. Well, well I, I don't think I don't think it's women in particular. No, no. no uh, I'm but being, the thing uh, is that I was the joking. people being who are recruited for this are activists, and exactly. quite a few activists happen to be women. So they're and the, the sad ones part we're is going to see uh, to, to see. So it's not uh, indicative of women as a oh, whole. And, it's and, indicative of the activist mindset. And the and classic women gamer is anything. not interested in joining this bullshit. Exactly, and then, I've but, met but a lot of them. <laughs> but that's a grift, isn't it? Because there, yes. you, you saw, like in the in the video that we that we made. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's being suppressed big time. Um, that uh, Xbox believes that they have three potential billion customers left untapped, which is a complete and total fiction. And then they need to use diversity to get them. Because the only thing that, uh, or because what's going to convince these three billion women and uh, and other diverse people across the face of the earth to get an Xbox is to be seen and feel safe by it. They need to see themselves, right. and then they'll all instantly start to begin gaming, which is total bullshit. I mean, either you're into gaming or you're not, and that's kind of like a cultural thing. Not everyone is going to get into gaming, no matter what you do. You're yeah, I mean they don't get it. The planet. Not gonna Entertainment has always run itself like a pizza restaurant, basically. Almost everybody loves pizza, right? But not everybody likes the same shit on their pizza. So you have to be able to accommodate different customers. So you had different toppings for different pizzas. Well, I, and that's the way the companies used to work. Now they want to make one homogenous pizza for everybody and expect everybody to like it. See, that's the thing, and that's not how business works. You have different flavors and toppings sure, for course. a reason. Yeah. And, and one of the ways you can tell all this uh, DEI grifter group is that if you take a look at the pictures on their sites of their staff and everything else, they're all into personal hygiene. So we know they're not gamers. Yeah. <laughs> no, Red Syrup wants pizza. Yeah. yeah, and I've used it before, Kalecki, but it, it is. It works because, like I said, it's one thing that almost everybody likes. Even if you're a vegetarian, most will eat pizza. But again, it all depends on what you'll eat on your. But it's like you, you forgot that you used to cater to a certain audience for a reason. You can't cater to everybody. Everybody knew that. Like, that's one of the oldest adages in business, right? You can't please them all all the time, but you can please most of them some of the time, right? Well, the, so. the, but the problem is that the these groups want to make sure that uh, it. It doesn't uh, uh, cater to us. That's the irony. That's the problem. They're, they're not trying to add themselves into it. They're trying to delete us, which yes. is what I don't get. Yeah, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, Paul. And that's the that's why the are key. They, why, why? Why is that? Why is that part of their? And that's mandate? where I'm throwing my hands up in the air, going, "Why are you doing this?" Because you're right. You're absolutely right. And this goes across with all nerd culture, right? Because most as we brought up, brought up many times before i don't understand where they get this idea that it's just this white men thing that we're we're gatekeeping in some way it's like no because especially when it comes to nerd culture we we turn into blubbering fools when it comes to, to women oh right? for we, sure we're more than welcoming and we have plenty of friends that are diverse like i pointed out with revenge of the nerds that was very representative of most nerd groups at that time and still is because you had just about everybody in the group, right? You had your bookworm nerd. You had your oh. gay black dude. You had your Asian dude. You had, you know, you're like, I mean, there's there's a bit of a cliche involved, but I mean, you know, if you went to a land party and and, and a female entered and joined the gang, it was, <laughs> I mean, it was. Do we get your number? I mean, yeah. we're we're pathetic. I basically we turn into the jerk and Steve Martin when he's trying to ask uh, what's yeah. your face for a date. Listen, <laughs> I am that? thankful I, I am married. I am <laughs> and to a wonderful woman, but I, I don't think that uh, I would have been given a second chance. 
are you trying to ask me out on a date? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think, I I think that that's while. at least what made Woody Allen somewhat attractive at the time, although he wasn't a particularly attractive man, was the fact that he was a nerd that an, an, a nerd that went after women actively. So yeah. that was kind of a new twist on being the, you know, the, the, uh, the shy Jewish comedian. Well, and speaking and of the nerd. Church, Steve Martin was kind of a nerd yeah. too. I mean, he still is. I mean, yeah. so yeah, I mean, that was another good example, but anyway, yeah, no, I agree with you. Abdulio sends in five and says valve is privately owned by Gabe. We will all, we all fear the day he passes away. And as he has been very good to PC gaming, not perfect, but better than most. Yeah. That's look. I, one thing I hear consistently from gamers is that Steam is the way to go, basically. It's the only way to go. Yeah. That's what Steam's I can do. Steam's great. I love Steam. And then we've got uh, Forgotten Lectures who says some big PC platforms just hide things they don't like behind age restrictions without any explanation to make them hard to find and unmarketable. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. There's one way of doing it, I guess. Um, and then shifting gears just a little bit here, Chris J sends in $5 and says, have y'all seen Campia's rant on pelts? He called him an asshole for questioning Iger's experience making movies. I haven't seen it, but somebody sent me the laundry list of uh, names that he called pelts and anybody who uh, <laughs> supports him. Campia is the biggest Bob Iger fanboy on the face yeah. of the earth. So that is not something you should take serious at all. And he, he suffers the worst case of JPEG derangement syndrome, ignoring all reality when it comes to protecting his boy, Bob Iger. So, uh, yeah, no, I haven't seen it. See no reason to it. There's yeah. no hope there. I mean, there is no bigger sufferer of the JPEG derangement syndrome on the face of the earth than John Campia, who basically sees Bob Iger as a saint who can do no wrong. I mean, the only one who probably has it worse is Bob himself. Yeah, it's the two of them. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna we're gonna run through. We got a, a cadre of different super chats we're gonna get to just before the Godzilla Kong ones because that's the thing, last thing we're gonna talk about here. Um, so uh, let's get through the rest of these. There, so there's gonna be some shifting of gears here and there. But Jason Webster sends in five dollars and says. Lou Gossett Jr. won Best Supporting Actor for his performance in Officer and a Gentleman. That's true. Uh, and he will be missed. Uh, yeah, since both of you gentlemen weren't here when we talked about Lewis uh, this morning, was there anything uh, you wanted to say quick about him? Uh, yeah, well, it's a sad, uh, sad loss, and he was fantastic in uh, the first Punisher movie from 1989. I did mention that, yeah. Yeah. He was a good, good actor. Mm -hmm. I was actually surprised he wasn't in more things. He was a very steady character actor and uh, take it. I kind of compared him a lot to like, he had that gravitas that only a few men did of his era, like Sidney Poitier, um, James. Oh, I don't Jones. think he was up there with Sidney, not in the same level, but I mean, you could have him play a role. And, and what I meant was his roles were not dictated by his skin color. He always played a role that just, it didn't matter, right? He wasn't always playing thugs or this, you know, bad guy one or two or whatever like that. He was always playing, you know, more gravitas with his roles. He was, I, I just boss, liked whatever the, he was in. So <laughs> the officer in the officer yeah. and a gentleman, you know, like, no, I just thought he, he was kind of rose above his, uh, his race for the time is what my point You're was. You're getting yourself Indeed. into trouble there. Move Not on. really. Yeah. I thought I did pretty good. <laughs> Moving on. Whatever. <laughs> I thought it was a good point. Jason Webster says, uh, the, uh, well, we're going to get back to this, but uh, he says, Jason, uh, the legendary monster verse needs to strike balance between King of the monster style story and Godzilla versus Kong style Kaiju action. Um, I thought they kind of did here, but we'll get back to that here. Cause I don't think uh, Paul has seen it yet. So we're going to let him pass I've not out seen the movie. We, have we you seen the movie? It. We both have. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. So uh, we're going to talk about that. Six was here and she did see it, but uh, yeah, she did have to ship out. Mark Daly uh, says, rip Lou Gossett Jr. Pour one out for Chappie Sinclair and Matthew's star mentor. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think you're underselling him a little bit, Paul, but yeah. Anyway, uh, we got an accident seller here who says, uh, 
Imagine Walt Disney saying, we got a slate of exciting movies coming up with Bambi 2, Snow White 2, 3, and 4, Steamboat Willie 2 and 3, uninspired. Now, yeah, 100%. And this is that was Bob's big magic thing he pulled out last, one of the last ones where he's like, I got Toy Story 5 and Frozen 8 and whatever else coming out, Zootopia 6. Like, yeah, anything original in there, Bob? No? Okay. Uh, and then we've got uh changer of the ways of beep bop boop sends in $10. It says idea Hollywood reporter, Disney shell first push Bo was fired and brought up only fans and hard to work with. But Bo tweeted the truth will come out. I think he is a victim or forced out, you know, changer of the ways. The longer we go without any kind of salacious accusations or anything like that, the, the more it looks like kind of where i was getting to because you know there's all kinds of options this could be it could be the only fans thing it could be there's something else coming out which i don't want to get too ahead of but it could also just be that going by what we we know of him from witcher he was a bit difficult to work with maybe because he wanted to stick with the source material and people behind the scenes maybe didn't and we know how when somebody who is difficult to work with that generally is uh translation for they didn't want to change things <laughs> is that kind of your observation too andre sometimes with these things uh we we have no idea what's going on for the time being but that should there yeah. could be several things here so i wouldn't personally judge but i think he he may have wanted to stick too close to the source material they probably weren't happy about this only fans i absolutely believe that's a big part of it i i have a hard time believing from what I saw, even though I saw some pretty horrendous shit uh, to me, that may be horrendous, but I don't think it's horrendous enough for Disney. I think they're using it as excuse unless something worse comes up. But that's just my opinion. Obviously. Uh, Paul, what do you think? You're not talking about Cavill being involved in only fans. No, 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 no. Bo DeMeo. He also oh, okay. left around the same time. Going, Here's I'm, the thing. Bo also worked on, on Witcher with Cavill and he left around Bo the same right time as Cavill. For the same damn reasons and that's where i'm kind of getting to a point here i'm starting to wonder like he might be somebody who's able to keep his black gayness exclusive from his writing and maybe disney wasn't too happy about that or that's maybe just one observation from witcher because they found out about this and they handed off the trouble to somebody else maybe that could be too that could very very well be but it sounds to me like at that point at least until we hear more on the subject uh, that it just was like, uh, yeah, this is somebody who I, likes I would to... rather. I'd rather start uh, a Cavill only fans rumor. <laughs> I'm sure he would not like that very much. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean, look, again, unless I see some, as much as I'm not a fan of what he did on OnlyFans, I didn't think it was that bad compared to other things that Disney has dealt with. So oh. I'm wondering if he, like Pat Brett put here, maybe he wasn't woke enough. Sure, he could be a black gay man who's adopted by Asian parents. But if he's somebody who's like, yeah, but that's not in the source material and I'm not going to do that, that would be to them considered difficult to work with. Maybe. I'm that's, not kidding. I am not even yet. kidding. Because here, have you ever heard what happened to, uh, um, oh God, I just forgot his name, Walter Mosley from Star Trek Discovery. Do you know who Walter Mosley is? I'm no. sure you would. I recognize well, he wrote, the name. Yeah, he's a, a prolific writer uh, through the civil rights movement. And he did. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, okay. Um, he was in the writer's room there. And, uh, one day he got a phone call from HR and, and they're like, uh, we're just calling to let you know that there was some people in the writer's room who felt uncomfortable with you using the N word the other day. And he's like, right. excuse me. I am the N word of the writer's room. <laughs> and he got very upset about this. So yeah, like, don't be surprised if sometimes the woke are just not woke enough. You can be all these things and still not be woke enough for certain people. Well, we have a school board here in Ontario that um, voted out the only black member because they said he was racist. Against who? Other black people? Uh, because he didn't believe there was white supremacy. Oh, so, right. Yeah. So he got tossed from the board. Of he was white an unbeliever. People. He was an unbeliever. The yeah. only black guy. On yeah, the board. so they got rid of the Kupar bastard, right? That's yeah. that's correct because yeah. they had a board full They're of really... communists who, who, whose identity was tied in with white supremacy, and and they tossed the only black guy. 
who said there mm. wasn't any. <laughs> Shh, go figure. Fluffy Pandas <laughs> been a member for 15 months. Thank you for that. And me and my monkey has been here for a month. Thank you for that. We got Abdulio in the house who says uh, the U.S. government has ha- a hand in gaming esports, and these consulting companies, YouTube shut down Craig's side scroller stream as they went down that rabbit hole. Wow, interesting. I mm. have not heard about that. Uh, and then we got Tanil who says, uh, safe to say Tom's final reprediction was right. Well, we have a ways to go when it comes to other things, but I think the gaming industry is going to be one of the first places we'll see a change because they cannot afford to lose because the gaming industry is big, but for a reason because of white men, mainly <laughs> let's be real here. White guys are the biggest gaming group. There is, it's just, it's just the yeah. truth. It's just yeah. the truth. So no change further. of the ways. Yeah. Change of the ways of beat bop boop sends in two and says, by the way, valve ex- exec based as fuck told uh black game girls to go get after. Well, isn't that where they host that, uh, that list too, or, Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say. So. Steam hosts the list. The That's what uh, I thought. but that was only the the sweet baby ink list. But there could very well be a BBG list coming up. Oh, it's actually the 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 uh, sweet baby ink list is going to get uh, changed from. And I'm not joking here. This oh, okay. Is from the founder himself, it's going to get changed from sweet baby ink detected to DEI detected. There you from, go. Uh, for all of them. Not a well, bad I move. think that makes that makes actually actually good sense. Yeah. Yep. They're gonna hate it. They're they just gonna hate it. Pinochet's helicopter tour sends in two and says, "Paul, making money and extortion are different things." The cash is cash. <laughs> cash, cash. Uh, Tanil says, uh, "Paul, I guess it's time to start calling the Xbox X Bone again." Then, yeah. PC Master Race for the win. Wow. Well, I, my understanding is that Microsoft themselves as a corporation have uh, very, uh, have adopted DEI full, full on. Are you surprised? Kind of. Um, because they've been sort of, you know, such capitalist pirates. They're very, I mean, in, in the days of Bill Gates, and Steve Ballmer were very, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, they left no prisoners. Yeah. They, but I mean, gaming is already bunch. game development. As far as I know, is already kind of diverse. So that's where I'm like going, well, what else do you got to do? There's, there's lots of elements in game development. I mean, I, I come from an era where programmers were unbelievably toxic people and, well my and, point <laughs> is you don't have six guys working on a game now like you used to it's literally a cast of thousands no, so i i think uh hold on no no there are independent games that are selling true extremely but, well when it's like one or two guys or but that's two women, the exception women, to the rule one women Paul, and one point. guy i'm talking about triple a games though AAA like, games is like a multi like back in the days dollars, of the atari yeah. and stuff like that yeah you had a one to two to three four five programmers working on a game i can see that being a boys club thing. yeah but you know why because the memory in it was only a uh, yeah, K. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But now, like I said, you literally have a cast of thousands working on this game. So it's almost impossible yes. not to be diverse, is my point. <laughs> and, I mean, the main problem with gaming is that the games themselves have become boring. Yes, that's a big problem. Chaos in, Sonic one, of all of this. Yeah. It says PlayStation is also uh, just as bad as they kept censoring and uglifying females since 2015. They are only stopping because they are begging the weebs back well and that's just it i don't know i don't know sony's corporate side of things when it comes to gaming as well as i know their entertainment side of things which are two completely separate divisions basically so yeah that's not entirely true i mean they they i mean final fantasy i mean there's an awful lot of games with some good looking women and 2015 uh, i i perhaps selectively but not across the board. I kind of see where he's coming from though. Cause I'm not a big, huge gamer. So like the last few games I've bought have been either film related, um, maybe a couple sports games here and there, but otherwise I, I mean, the last I, big game, I, I don't have a PlayStation GTA five. five. I don't have a but five. Yeah, GTA five would have been the last one I bought. And I mean, that would, that's how many years ago now, as far as a, a new in quotation games. That's all. But I mean, if you don't count like RoboCop and shit like that, like, I mean, what's left. And I mean, I can understand where he's coming from because I don't I, get into a lot of the other games. I think so, they're yeah. talking about uh, Horizon 
the Horizon Zero Dawn series. That's what I mean. You have a lot of games. The last one, they actually made the lead uh, character less appealing. Well, and you had, you know, well, and I don't know how much Sony had to do with it, but you had like the Last of Us controversy and all that stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, that was Naughty Dog, I believe, but yeah. Naughty Dog was a huge contributor to Sony. Yeah. Uh, the, and then we the, have the Uncharted series, which was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And then we've got uh, the Red Dawn Batman, who's been a member for 11 months, says real gamers have only ever wanted one thing from their games, and it's just escapism and fun. Go play Helldivers 2. You both, you get both for liberty and democracy. Yeah, it's a pretty popular game right now. Yeah. Um, let's see here. We got accidents. Yep. Accident seller sends in 15 to region Cronin says Andre heard of pioneer laser active 1993 laser disc player that accepted Sega cartridge via expansion slot could also play laser disc games, but they suck. Yes. I heard about not yeah. only that I hear about it. I actively wanted it, but I, um, in 1993, <laughs> I did not have the pocket money to be able to afford it. Yeah. Like you just see some videos now and they do well, the they inflation never... rates. Yeah, I never got my laser disc. I was too young. I know I never got my hands on laser disc. My buddy had one though. That was. You know, but, uh... I had laser disc. Yeah, of course, because you're you're bougie. Like no, no, I had laser disc because I was doing educational programming with the uh, with Apple HyperCard, and you could connect the HyperCard to a laser disc, and so you'd see text on one screen, and you would learn about dinosaurs or something, and you could click a button, and it would go to the frame on the laser disc to show the video yeah she was cool. said nerdy it was uh, i was one of some of the most fun i ever had was programming hypercard uh laser disc controllers and then big daddy mri says in 1999 says i love nightwish have the albums of their songs done by orchestra and i can tell you an absolutely beautiful music yeah, yeah. indeed those were some great concerts and uh i did see the concerts with the original singer so yeah, that was pretty awesome. Original and then we, singers. And then we yeah, got yeah. Sweet Sweet Potato Knight who says, "Don't stop at Xbox. Go after Microsoft. Stop using Windows. Use <laughs> Linux. Make the demand for developer developers to use Linux." I, I honestly, if I was a techie enough, I would totally back this. I just I'm hardly able to turn shit on. Yeah. Pet Brett says uh, with five Canadian, "Don't forget to stop by the Xbox X account and declare your color of power and preference." Uh, and then we got Tanil who says, as an Italian, no good pizza was ever lazy. That's true. That is true. Even the worst pizzas are generally not lazy. Uh, then we've got Bucky Cat here with 10 who says, it was always women and above all young ones who were the most bigoted adherents of the party, the swallowers of slogans, the amateur spies, and nosers out of unorthodoxy. Orwell, 1984. Really? Uh, this is a historical truth. Yes. Man, so Orwell was a gamer. Yeah. Yeah. Total gamer. Well, that's an we interesting got... quote. Yeah. I didn't even know that. I... No, no, it, uh, that's an Orwell quote, and it was an observation, because when you look at every kind of fascistic organization, basically, ever, many of the most adherent and true-believing hardcore followers are the women. This is true after yeah. Orwell's time as well. I mean, just look at ISIS. Uh, the ones you see in the in the in the news are the are the men, but they go there many of them for the women who are really enabling it as well. Well, when you look at what most wars are fought over in history, yeah, yeah. <laughs> generally stems to something to do with women. Yeah. Uh, Chaos Sonic One sends in two and says, "Hell nerds become simps before females." We want. Uh, them to say we want them to play with us. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, that was a very expensive uh, <laughs> joke. Joke, but it was. Uh, and then Graph Web sends in two dollars to remind you to hashtag cancel Disney Plus. Yes, indeed. Uh, and then we got Vincenzo Beretta. That's a cool ass name. Sends in ten euro and says Mila Jovovich once said that it is the nerds who get the cool girls. I guess that her career and marriage proved that. Well, there there was a time, a small time where the nerds were cool and 
there wasn't any of these problems. And that's when corporations and other people notice, hey, there's money there and there's influence. Miller forgot to say one thing. It's yeah. the nerds were hyper successful and rich that get the girls. This is true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a very, very important distinction there. I yes. mean, if, you, if you're just a, a random nerd and just to use stereotype living in your parents' basements and you have very little going for you other than your ability, your high score mm. in certain games, Mila Jovovich is unlikely to look twice at you. Let's just put it that way. Correct. Doll Life Dan sends in 10 and says, when U.S. women got to vote, the first thing they used it for was prohibition. This is kind of true. Because booze was men's escapism. The war on gaming is poetry of history. I, this is kind of what I was getting at, Doll Life Dan. Although I was semi-joking, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, Chaos Sonic 1 says, no, guys, I was talking about the anime games because they kept censoring anime games. I mean, cute anime girls. And all of a sudden, sun glares all over her body. Oh, yeah, I remember some of this stuff, yeah. I don't know who exactly would be behind that specifically, though, but uh, that's just because I don't follow it so much. Uh, Gerald Compass sends in five and says uh, the PlayStation 3 also plays 3D Blu-rays. I have one, but not backwards compatible version. Yeah, that was the thing, because here's what pissed me off for short. I'll just keep this real short. I had the original uh, PlayStation and I kept having problems with it. It kept burning itself out because of that stupid update. So I finally just called lemon law on them and i said i wanted a new one well i went to the store to get a new one what was with slim ones and i didn't realize till i got it home that it didn't play my ps2 games i was pissed yeah i was so pissed yeah but uh nothing i could do at that point really it didn't blow up well yeah i was sick and tired here's the thing i I was one of the earlier people to get one and then it's like i I, I even bitched i'm like you know my playstation has been with you guys more than i've had (laughs) it's it's bullshit because i had to send it in like three fucking times uh charger of the ways of beat bop boop says uh suffrage led to prohibition just saying yeah like i said you're not wrong uh kalekioki says sony has their own set of infighting horizon last of us spider-man 2 etc first party games by sony that are heavily influenced by dei however stellar blade is fpas uh well and that seems to cater to audience yeah i don't know what fp as. that's what i'm trying I'm trying to figure out what that is that's where i stumbled yeah i'm not sure what you mean by that but as far as the rest goes yeah there's going to be some people who are going to fight for the dei side of things but are these people really actually buying and playing the games that's the thing yeah god of war was uh infested also first party first party oh okay ah. yeah god of war the the sequel had been altered. Yeah, no, I can, I can see what you're saying here, but uh, I don't think these people will stick around if they just get ignored. Right. Like, so that's the main thing. Cause they're not any real p- buying power. At the end of the day, chaos Sonic one sends in five and says, if you guys want to understand on anime game censorship from t- uh, Sony talk to raging golden Eagle, he has the one that covered the stories on Sony. Oh, I haven't talked to him in a while. Someone um, else who has a bunch of stories is Mr. Chato, who unfortunately has yes. been leaving us. Yes, indeed. Uh, before we get into monkey versus lizard, uh, Paul, what do you got going on? Oh, not much. I'm relaxing today. All right. I, you know, I don't, I'm not like you guys. You guys are crazy, but four videos a, a week for me is, is a big slog. Why do you think I'm so stressed? <laughs> I'm, and i don't want to be as stressed as you <laughs> you know i've, I've got my yoga you. lesson every morning <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to do that that's been unbelievably helpful well that's yeah. good here well so, yeah uh, it is a slog but it must be done so everyone please help share our most recent yeah. xbox video because a lot of work went into it but we're not a gaming channel so it's not getting the kind of coverage that i think it deserves for really exposing something that I don't think it's getting enough attention. Namely, that the policies that Xbox just announced is what has been destroying destroying gaming the past five years. But they're they're making corporate happy. They're a lot. Xbox is aligning with uh, Microsoft corporate. Oh yes, no Bill Gates is very happy, and his no Bill is gone. It's Nadella. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. totally. 
It's not Dell. Well, they're all very happy. We saw like the marketing manager who was like, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, was, we got one more here that. Yeah. How, how old to... was she? Like, my God. <laughs> how old was the marketing manager for Xbox? Well, that's that's almost right out of the womb there. Well, well Sergeant. Um, the diversity hire. So, yeah. Expect Sergeant Point Blank sends in five and says, it sucks because I'm addicted to Diablo 4 and Blizz is owned by own my microsoft now. microsoft now yeah well you know what there's a ton of other great games out there it's just yep. waiting for them to discover you or for you to discover them yep i've i've quit battle net i have nothing to do with blizzard anymore they can go fuck themselves there you go well thank you paul for being here speaking of going to fuck yourself which uh, i will that's <laughs> Love you, that's, brother. That's Take care of yourself. That's actually what I was planning on and have doing. a happy holiday weekend. Yes, and uh, you too. Yeah. Have, uh, have a wonderful time. Remember, uh, Jesus rises on Monday, and if he sees his shadow, it's going to be another winter for another three weeks or so. Something like Meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, happy Passover. Yeah, it's not yet. Isn't it? Okay, well, when is it? I can't recall. I Don't forget, I was raised a... Christian, I, I can't remember any of the Jewish holidays. I, I thought to. Passover already happened, but I could be wrong. Uh, oh yes, me too. yeah, Passover has happened. See, that's that's where I'm. Such a Easter is earlier this year than what we're used to too. Yeah, because of the moon phases. But yeah. Anyways, talk to you, everyone. Take care. Have a good one. Yeah. Have a Bye. good weekend. You too. All, All right. right. Let's uh, get into the. So Robert sends in two dollars and says, "Monkey v Lizard has mid credit scene via Mister H." Now I was told it didn't. I checked out during the credits because Collider had a story up that said it did not. Did you stick around through the credits, Andre? No, I was in a rush to get back here. I left. So this is news to me. Back. If there was one, because as far as I know, there wasn't, and nobody corrected me last night. So and it's, and it's not like I was in like uh, right excited to see what would happen next. Let's put it that way. <laughs> This is why I was hoping six would here because we'd have maybe a bit more of a balanced conversation on this. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, as far as I can tell here, uh, no, it doesn't. So I don't know what Mr. H is talking about. Yeah, and then six uh, coming in background well, here. It, should, it should be like this has happened before that uh that some publication they get some kind of like early pre i just checked thing. two of them but yeah okay uh, fine and then and then they go and they add something to like the, the main release date this has happened before so i don't know but uh, well, yeah if somebody in the chat has seen the movie too and did stick through the credits correct us if we're wrong but i didn't and i stayed through part of the way till i got um oh in the end credit scene the, the monkey kisses the lizard while well, they were looking at each other quite longingly through the whole movie and dancing so you know like fred astaire and ginger rogers but uh so yeah so uh with that uh <laughs> let's, let's finish off these super chats here and we'll get into yeah, the discussion let's do, that. let's do that uh we've got uh we got uh one that's going to be a spoiler so i'm going to save that and I'm going to jump to this one here and says, uh, Callum Lyle with five Australian says, uh, he lost my respect when he and Gary said out loud, only dumb people will go see it. So screw him. If he's on FNT tomorrow, he'll say it. Um, and Ooh. I think this is in reference to Chris Gore. Oh, but back um, off Chris. I mean, let him say yeah. it. It's like, yeah, just leave. Chris is awesome. Leave him be. I mean, yeah. I did. And actually I've seen him. I was listening to him before the show here and it sounded like he, Walk that back a little bit. So I think he understood what he, he, he shouldn't have made such a generalized statement or whatever. I think it's kind of what he was getting at. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. He was kind of judging it more from the angle of Godzilla minus one and not thinking about it from a completely different angle. But Hey, when Taro sends in five euros and says, what is with open season on shitting on Chris Gore? Are we coming in echo chamber? Oh no. And like I said, I think, uh, I, I don't think he really meant it in any way like that. Um, yeah, I'll back off, Chris. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, just back off. Chris is yeah, awesome. and and then uh, Mr. Burger comes in, says, "Let Disney crap out. There is no saving it. There's no fixing it. I hope Bob Iger gets everything he wants, and the company crashes faster." Well, thank you, Mr. Burger, and check out his channel because Mr. Burger is awesome, um, and he does awesome trivia and stuff like that. And hopefully, I'll be working with Mr. Burger soon with some animated stuff. I've been thinking about. But we got six back here because she wants to talk about Monkey versus Lizard. 
So <laughs> we're going to start off with non-spoilers at first, and then maybe we'll get into some spoilers here as we move along. But we're not going to be sticking to it too long, I don't think. But uh, welcome back, Six. How you doing? And both muted. went quiet. Sorry, I was in bed watching uh, Godzilla when Tom <laughs> asked when Tom asked me to hop back in, and so I just jumped on my computer, and then I realized my TV was still on, so I had to turn it off. No, no worries. So, all right. So, uh, all three of us on the panel have seen Godzilla X Kong: The New Empire. Um, so, before we get too deep into it, what did we all think of the MonsterVerse up to this point? And then our brief uh, reaction to this. Shall we start with you, Six? Since you just joined us again, I think so. Yes, I love Godzilla. I love Kong. I've never seen a bad Godzilla or Kong or Godzilla and Kong movie. So it's a it's a pretty easy sell for me. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much my take on the whole monster verse and the Titans and all that. It's all good for me. What'd you think of this one? This one, I gave it a seven, and as time has, I gave it a seven last night when we were talking about it on Midnight's Edge After Dark, and it's going up. The more I think about the movie, the more I read about the movie, um, seeing the the box office is very exciting. So, yeah, it's it's going up. It's not as good as Ghostbusters. I don't know why I feel the need to to make that uh, exception. Comparison. Yeah, yeah, but it, I had I had a great time at that movie. Yeah, it did 10 million in preview so far, so that's not too shabby. Um, that's excellent. Andre, that's yeah, Andre. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Well, before anyone hears what I have to say, yeah, there's one very, very important head share. I honestly don't even know why I went to see it. Uh, I don't like these movies. I, I know. Like I was going to actually hedge yeah. it for you, but go ahead. Yeah. So, so everyone, this is if you are a fan i that's the most important thing then do not let me detract anything this is this is coming from someone who who saw this movie even though the movie really isn't for me per se i like the original king actually i like all the king kong movies apart from the 2005 one that was pretentious uh i really like the original godzilla i absolutely adore shin godzilla Still waiting to see Godzilla Year One, waiting for the digital release for that one, because I'm in a part of the world where I didn't have an option to see it uh, with uh, with uh, English subtitles, unfortunately. Uh, and as for the MonsterVerse movies, the only one of them I kind of liked was Kong Skull Island. Kind of liked. And other than that, I have liked each and every one of them progressively less than the one before because they're, they're just not for me i was never into the to the toho 60s 70s godzilla movies on the quiet the contrary i find them unwatchable i've always found so because i just discovered them too late didn't grow up with them wasn't even aware of them till I was in like my late teens or twenties. Didn't try to see them until then, and by that time it was too late. They were unwatchable to me. There's like something tonally in these movies that I don't really like. Didn't like Godzilla versus Kong for that very reason. I just thought it was like lame and colorful and stupid. Again, I see why fans like it. So never mind me. The fans liked it, and that's the most important thing, but it wasn't to my liking. I don't even know what possessed me to go see this one. But, um, but yeah, this also wasn't to my liking. Uh, but, but the fans are going to love it, I think. I mean, if you like the MonsterVerse so far, this has everything that the previous movie did and more of it. So it's going to be awesome in that sense. More power to you. And the one spot, the one spoiler we had heard that I think would have been off putting didn't happen. So, yeah, fantastic. But, uh, but yeah, to me, it was it's, it's a remake of those 70s Japanese movies that I that I find unwatchable. Now it is watchable, but to me, it's not enjoyable. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, yeah, no. Totally understandable. Um, me, on the other hand, I've I, I've enjoyed the Godzilla Kong MonsterVerse franchise to this point. It's had its ups and downs. I thought the first movie started off strong, but then fell off. 
real fast. Uh, the second one I liked a lot, but I hated all the human stuff. And subsequently since then, I'm talking about Godzilla one. The Kong one was pretty good. But uh, subsequently since then, like all my complaints with these fr- with this franchise, it's like they're addressing it. Not me specifically, but they are like there's less and less humans as we go along. Um, more monster fun. It's, I've been comparing it to a Saturday morning cartoon and not in a derogatory way. Like that's what it feels like. This movie, I felt like I was eight years old again, sitting there with the sugariest, marshmallowiest cereal I could find. You know, just entranced with monkey fighting lizard or monkey fighting with lizard however you want to put it in this respect but no i had a fucking blast with this movie a fucking blast i liked the last one but i loved this one um so yeah i mean i I really can't say much more than that without getting into spoilers but uh i'm sorry you didn't enjoy it too much andre but yeah i i I think you're right that this is kind of not your cup of tea i think there was there was no universe in which i was going to enjoy that you know what that's a good thing because this movie wasn't made to me, and just like we talked about with uh, with uh, with uh, Xbox and DEI and stuff like that, if you were to make this movie enjoyable to me, the changes you'd have to make would make it so it was no longer enjoyable to you or any of the other fans of the seventies eras um, movie. So then I say, good that I didn't enjoy it. I'm glad that you guys did because you're the target audience and I'm not. Well, and I had you like... only right that, uh, that uh, you should enjoy it more. And uh, here's like the thing. There's not really a lot that I can say that, oh, I wish that this had been different, this had been different. B- because all the stuff that I kind of like have issues with, I think probably are relatively fundamental parts of the movie if you are going to do like the the shuva era i think that's what it's called if you are going to do that on film i really don't know that there are like many things in this that you can change that would make it appeal to me without fundamentally altering what the movie is yeah no and i was just gonna say i'd hedge it a little bit with like if we hadn't had god shin godzilla and godzilla minus one in the last few years to kind of counterbalance these i'd be more pissed yeah right because i'd be like that's what pissed me off about the first godzilla was like you took it seriously but then it kind of went off the rails and then godzilla king of monsters is like okay i love what you're doing with the monster stuff but the human shit is just getting way too fucking convoluted and stupid but that's when i noticed and i I think other few other people did too including the studio themselves that kids like this stuff these toys are selling so they shifted gears quite quickly and and that's what got us here like God, godzilla versus kong and this are pure like family kid they're like made for the eight-year-old boy and everybody it feels like even six <laughs> i know it sounds bad but we all have an eight-year-old boy inside of us yes it um, was just like yeah when he's ripping shit apart and stuff you know what i mean like we were talking about millie bobby brown last night on the night's edge after dark and i so i started looking into that like why wasn't she in the movie was anything said about it and initially she was supposed to be in it that's what i thought yeah and i found an article from 2020 or i don't know when several years a few years ago and it had uh multiple tweets from people saying uh i hope millie bobby brown doesn't ruin this next movie Ooh. And I hope that there is less humans in it. And it, there was this one tweet and it was almost like he was predicting this movie because he wanted to see more monsters fighting and less humans. And I, I looked for the tweet so I could respond to him now years later and say, well, you should be happy now because that's exactly what we got. <laughs> well, and that was what I was saying. And I think a lot of fans were saying, because like at this point with these movies, it's like, we don't want to see no stupid humans. We just want to see monsters fighting at this point. I would like really, to have seen more humans. Honestly, I feel like the balance was perfect in this movie. Like it felt like they didn't waste and meander. And I know, like, I think you said it last night. You like just, uh, this is in the trailer. So it's not like a spoiler spoiler. Like, you know, when Kong was getting uh, his hand fixed, you thought they'd go through this whole thing of building the, 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 the contraption they put on his hand and all that stuff. But no, there's a real quick, yeah, you know. very quick. Yeah, I thought it would be like a big teamwork <laughs> montage. Well, they because because as soon as the veterinarian, he's like, yeah, on it, you know, he's going to go off and get the hand and they start playing this 
this, I think, 80s rock and roll song, I thought, okay, here we go. Now there's going to be a bunch of uh, the, I, the, is it Iwa? I know I ask Iwi, you that every time. Iwi. Iwi, Iwi, the Iwi tribe. I thought this is going to be the Iwi tribe. They're going to be using their gravity manipulation and they're going to be helping building this thing. And nope, he just kind of goes into this cave, Trapper, the veterinarian, and flies off, comes back out with the, the hand apparatus and puts the brace on Kong. And that's kind of it. So, And I just so bring that okay. up because like, it's yeah, kind of cool. indicative of the film when it comes to humans, because like all their stuff is very streamlined. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're almost used kind of like just little jump points, just little transitions between scenes of the Titans. Yeah, the and people are stuck are, in there almost like commercials. Yeah, and people are asking about the messaging. I didn't really get any, Andre. Did you? Only environmental, and it's harmless. And yeah, yeah, and I pointed that out last night. I'm like, it's here, but it was kind of like with Ghostbusters, where it's there, but it's not like touched upon, like in comparison to Aquaman, which I watched not too long ago, and I counted literally within the first 20 minutes and i just stopped counting after that five times they bring up global warming five times yeah, that's yeah, this, the first 20 minutes this falls into the if there is any dei in it it is so organic that it doesn't detract from it so it i agree matter. yeah yeah and if if this movie was you know 20 30 years ago before this dei crap became a thing in our daily conversations it would not have even been, it just would have, it's just part of the story. Yeah. I correct. think. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. Agree. And I mean, I've even come to the point with Millie Bobby Brown, cause I thought she was supposed to be in it too. And I think Kyle Chandler, his role was supposed to be in there too. And I can kind of tell that they went through this with a fine tooth pen or whatever you want to call it. Comb. I know it was supposed to be what I said, but they slashed it. Cause I said it last night. It's like they sat down and go, okay, people just want the monsters and we don't have Bobby, Bobby Brown. And, uh, Kyle coming back. Okay, let's get rid of this scene. So that's gotta go. That's gotta go. That's gotta go. That oh nope, monsters on that page. Okay, no, that's gotta go. Monsters, monsters, monsters. That's gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It miss feels her. like Trapper was combined character. He felt like Kyle Chandler's character mixed with a totally new character. But oh. I actually liked his character better than Kyle Chandler because as much as I like Kyle Chandler as an actor, he was so one note in the last few movies that I'm just like, okay, dude we get it like you know like get a new get a new note right like that's what i was starting to get to but like the characters that are here i thought they were just fine they carried the story along they got us from point a to b to c when it came to the monsters the story was really easy to follow it's going to be fine for kids i think little boys are going to fucking love this movie they're going to love it um but andre you have a little boy what would you say like do you think your kid's going to love it or did you get a chance to take him or did you Wait, just uh, yeah, no, a little bit young for the, for that yet. I th yeah, I think he's gonna love it. I, I when he gets a little older, it. yeah, 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 absolutely. I All right, well, so. Andre, I know you have to check yeah. out. Um, yeah. before we get into any spoilers, uh, or I put the banner get... up. Just I wasn't. Oh, sure we do how have spoiler banners. Go, Tom. Okay, so now that we're in spoilers, that's what I was gonna say. Before okay. before you leave, did you want to get into any spoilers, Andre? Anything you want to talk about? Or well, I would say that I think basically what happened in the movie was fine. Uh, and uh, I'm very glad that the that the spoiler that we were worried about that it didn't come to pass. I was uh, happy with like the the feel good ending and stuff like that for everyone. I especially liked how how Godzilla, like a like a cat who found his favorite box to sleep. Oh in, God! Returned to his favorite <laughs> box to sleep in. That, that was the whole theater that, laughed that, at that. That kind of like, made the movie. That was the highlight. For that those like, who don't know what Andre is talking about, Godzilla has just adopted the Roman Colosseum. He's like, yep, this is my bed. I fits, I sits. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, that's, oh, yeah. that's something else that I noticed um, that some of the scaling, because I don't know how big the Colosseum is. So it, I don't know if it's a perfect scale for Godzilla. I don't but either, I did notice honest. in some of the scenes, um, towards the end when when all the big titans and the big reveal has come about which i won't say yet um when the titans are all fighting the scale of kong to scar and was it godzilla fighting i can't remember who was fighting whom Shimmer. but the scale did not seem to be consistent that scale sometimes is a little bit inconsistent isn't it yeah, they, they used a little sort one. Of. Like it's not it didn't take anything away from the movie, but I just I just noticed that. 
But overall, like, no, like Kong is a bit bigger than when he was younger. So he's closer to Godzilla's size. Um, now, what I got out of Scar compared to him is Kong's a hell of a lot more bulkier than Scar. But uh, Scar's yeah, taller yeah. Than, yeah. and lankier. Yeah. 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 Scar's almost more like an orangutan. I think he is. And then he he and he uses that moves, those moves to his advantage, obviously, yeah. too. So, like, no, I thought, uh, I mean, the fight, like the CGI, the fight scenes, I thought it was all fairly decent i didn't really feel like it got overly animated at any any time like a marvel movie or anything like that lately so i mean people have been asking about the effects and stuff like that so yeah yeah. the water the water cgi was great kong takes a shower in this (coughs) it's full of guts which it's it's pretty cool that's that's especially what the eight-year-old boys i I think are gonna yes um yes but yeah i was i was very i I looked up the size of the roman Colosseum. Uh, just for shits and giggles here uh, and uh, it is um, it's elliptical rather than circular so the perimeter is 1788 feet or 545 meters and the ovid central arena has a length of 287 feet and a width of 180 feet um you would just uh, fit probably yeah so so that should be uh so that should uh, and in meters it's pretty close yeah in meters a perimeter height is five yeah so yeah you'd that, have that, to curl up like he did in the movie because yeah he's almost yeah, 400 feet yeah like a kitty who found his box it should fit yep. really yeah. well <laughs> yeah. that was so fucking fun yeah like, for, for those who don't know like in the beginning part he just up and decides he's going to take a nap there <laughs> And they're like, Godzilla has forced all the people out of Rome. And he's decided to bunk up in the Coliseum. And then, and then at the end of the movie, that's where he goes back to to go to bed. So it's like, I found my new spot. This yeah. is where I'm going to stay. Probably nice and cozy, warm in the sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. The, that made everybody laugh, yes. And and did, it, it, Little Kong was another thing that I would say that people really liked. I know at first you weren't too happy with him, Six, but... The, no, I'm glad they did fucker. go that route. I was yeah, I am too. I, I was really, I did not think that they would go that far. Where, where basically before they they were befriended that that he would use Baby Kong to beat up competing Kong. Yeah. That was fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, he just picked him up by his feet and he was swinging him around like a whip. <laughs> what I liked is kind of like this. I wouldn't call it like an indie. Uh, indie short round kind of relationship but there is this kind of trying to think of a movie or a show where i've seen this kind of relationship before i'm sure there's a western or something like that where like you know you have a young young uh person then and then in the you know the older guys like show me where they came from blah blah blah. that's kind of what's happening here is kong encounters these apes he faces off against them baby kong he tries to be nice to him but he bites him and he's kind of not trusting him and he keeps setting him up for failure but Kong keeps proving him wrong and through their relationship, you know, they, they, they get closer, but like, yeah, like it's just, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting uh, relationship they had. I've seen it in movies and other things before. So I kind of like that. I thought it was a nice little, not typical thing. Cause like, I think you said it six before, like somebody said something about like a baby Yoda thing or something like that. Like, yeah, I, can, totally I thought went it, that way. cause he's so cute in the trailer. And so I thought it was going to end up being like a baby Yoda. He's just going to be sweet and adorable and I'm just going to want to protect him. And then he's a little fucker. So <clears throat> that <laughs> I didn't feel any need to protect him. But yeah, no, he, he, both of them earn each other's respect. Basically. I thought mm-hmm. that was very well done. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the character arc of baby Kong was, it was satisfying. But yeah, Andre, anything else you wanted to address before you had to, to run uh, off just, uh, just the final super chats that uh that let's uh, do that came in. yeah um we've got uh oh, we got that one already we got that one already we already got that uh we got callum though who says i was happy when mothra came back yeah i was surprised because i thought I, I unless i misheard him i thought mr h said that he was she wasn't going to be in the movie see now when you said that you were surprised that mothra was back i was surprised at that because I thought we had known that for a few weeks. So I don't somebody know if said I saw... they were in the, she was in a trailer. I didn't see. That's the other thing is the, the one big image where they have the three of them. That's the one they manipulate in a lot of the trailers and they don't have her in any of those trailers that I saw. So that's where I'm like, I don't know what trailers people saw. Cause I heard, and this is what I, I swore Mr. H said, and I, I hope I'm not misquoting him. So 
anybody can correct me if they if they remember otherwise i thought he had said that they meant to have her in the movie but the last minute they took her out because they didn't want to pay toho for the rights mm. so they had a different new creature in there well there um, was a different new creature it just was Mokura yeah that was shimmer so. though that we already yeah. knew that but yeah yeah but no mothra was supposed to be in there as the and, and here's the thing and this is another reason why i like this movie because it kind of solidified a, a my one of my early um, um theories i had was how they were setting the monsters up i always said kong was the protector of the people godzilla was the protector of earth mothra was like the mother of earth kind of thing it was like a you know you had this kind of just kind of this trifecta with the three of them and they all work and, and this movie played it perfectly so um but polly if you want to hop in real quick i know yeah come in you, here polly that's up yeah. to you but we're gonna go just going through super chats now but uh yeah i, I do have to uh to and out. you have to run anyway so yeah but uh uh on another what's note real the, quick what's the word on uh, uh member stream before Andre leaves? tuesday so 11, 11 a.m central tuesday. yeah okay. and then doll life dan before you go andre just uh he wanted to probably wanted you to see this the sony censored station was patient zero in the war on hot women they've been banning games since the early 2010s only very recently are they coming around to again to save their skins um yeah that's what i'm saying we know that xbox is uh, is bad we don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes of the others i'm not saying that they are perfect uh they could very well have their own rules which are not too dissimilar from what xbox has only xbox doubled down by making them public and Polly is joining us as you're exiting but uh hey, hey i'm just gonna move you hey, so hey. see you there yeah hey. so hefe what's up Hey, yeah, just uh, have to have to lean. It's like, yeah, it's an Easter Easter commitment, so I do have to be running. But good That's to see right. you. Have yeah, a good Friday. Have a great Easter weekend, Hefe. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You too. See you later, right. Andre. And Take care, Andre. Walking. Take care, and I'll see you all around. All right. And you saw it too, Paulie. You got to catch uh, Godzilla last night. Yeah, I was uh, lucky enough to get out. Uh, I, I, first of all, I was last couple days were really stressful here at the house um so it was great to get out and go see something that is a uh, pure fun and that mm -hmm. movie is pure fun sure there's some plot hole things here and there but you know what i didn't care tom i had a great time man i had a great time yeah i did too like i mean look I, the biggest thing i think people are gonna have a problem with are trying to compare this to godzilla minus one yeah and I think you're doing a disservice to the film, actually both films in a weird way by doing that. Cause they're two completely different monsters. Um, Get it <laughs> monsters. Yeah. And I'm being punny for on purpose. Cause this to me, like I said, this was made for the eight year old boy out there and all of us. And the ones that mm -hmm. are, it's, it's pure wrestling match slash Saturday morning slash whatever. If you want to go in and see nothing but just awesome looking monster fights, you're gonna have a blast. I saw this in 3D in a deluxe oh, wow. screen with Dolby Atmos, and it was a lot of fun. You know, I thought about you while I was watching my movie. I was like, oh wow, this would have been a lot better in 3D. But my first 3D show wasn't until 7 p.m. But uh, I thought with with the guts, all the mm -hmm. guts that were, you know, when he tears apart the, oh my God, yeah. the creature and the he gets green <clears throat> crap everywhere. I thought, wow, that's amazing in 3D. Yeah, well, each month, cool each stuff. yeah, each Kong, Kong, and Godzilla, their first scenes in the movie, they blow, they you know, tear stuff up and get guts on them. They both got slimed differently. <laughs> well, that's true. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I was, I was, uh, I was into it, bro. I was into it. Um, yeah. First of all, it's a complete disservice to both films. I mean, uh, minus one is it, it's it's just different and not that uh you know people are gonna have their their taste people are gonna ha have have it'll it'll appeal to different to different audiences this one man i saw this with a pack crowd audiences families they tom were eating up every scene laughing <laughs> cheering whoa da, 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 da. i don't know what like they did they couldn't get enough dude they couldn't get enough and uh i saw it in a xd cinemark xd cool. yeah it was it was really cool now it's, what is xd what does that mean probably like uh, imax kind of similar i was asking yeah. Polly. 
Yeah, the the not a, yeah, it was it was more of a it's more of a stretch screen, but the sound is amazing, a little vibration, uh, you know, great great screen, great seats. Okay. Um uh this is very colorful too, Tom. Yes. It it, it wants you to have fun. You know, this director was throwing was he's a you can tell he's a fan of 80s and 90s uh you know, action movies, man. It was a little bit of everything. I don't know if you got well, not it. just was... that cartoons, right? Like clearly watched a lot of transformers and yes. So like, I mean, you guys are going to get those vibes and that's what I said. I felt mm -hmm. like I was a kid again, watching cartoons and then not in a derogatory way in any way. Like it was just fun. Well, and, and that's another thing is, as I, it it's, Oh, well, if this movie is good for, if you're an eight year old or a five year old, you know what? That's why I'm going to this film. You well, that's why I said in all of us too, not just the five or eight year old, but in all of us too. But I'm talking about the I critics. Said, I've been hearing like, yeah, uh, yeah. You know that's what? Like, that's fine. The critics are going to be like that, right? But even some of our some of our buddies are like kind of like getting a, a you know putting their nose above this. It's like you need to stop. You need to stop. This is what happens when we can't have fun anymore. It's like something fun comes up, and it's a it to it me doesn't this preach. is preach. No, it's not. It doesn't nope. have any intersexualism that at least throws anything in your face. It doesn't even have any overt sexuality or anything like that. Nope. Sure, nope. it's a little violent, but it's all cartoony violence. That I was um, surprised. <laughs> I was surprised at the gore at the beginning. I was like, oh. And then but it's all goes. monster gore. So it's yeah. not like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like when he rips those creatures open, it's not like it doesn't look like he ripped open a cow. It's no, green. It's, green it's and, obviously yeah. not anything from like art from reality. Which is and fine. let's talk about all the monsters in the new world and the oh, you know, God. The, dude, dude, that's just it was fun. Amazing. It's yeah, fun. That's just fun. And uh, you know, I actually like this one better than the last one, not minus one, the, the me too. The the Godzilla versus Com because <clears throat> the fights were great in the in the other one, but it was just too much. And the the uh, all the all the uh Human stories were were just lame and Bob. What's her name? Well, I, said, I think they kind of got a good balance in this one. That was my opinion. What did you think between the humans and the monsters? I oh, think. dude! Every listen, th it was on point. Rebecca Hall, the Aussie guy. Uh, what's his name? Burn the guy who plays Bernie is fantastic. Uh, ta uh, uh, Tapper. Yeah, I'm just getting to really like his work now, especially after Bullet Train. Um, and then the little girl. I, I mean. This is what we want. Again, escapism. How it, cute it, was she, Polly? She's she's so cute. Well, and, and that's the thing with the last one. She won me over because I'm like, if I was Kong, I'd fucking fight to the death for that little deaf girl too. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and that's the thing I said with people like, because some people are even like, you know, girl, the, the key. Look, Kong always has to have either a kid or a blonde lady to fight for. Yeah. It's just a typical thing of any of the films or shows. He's mm -hmm. always had that. Um, so that True. doesn't bother me. I think the thing that might bother some fans though, but it didn't bother me. So, but I do understand and respect those who will have an issue with it. So I think I will bring this up and oh. that is they do have the new version of Mothra and, sh and her human counterpart spoilers is on the screen guys. Spoilers <laughs> is Gia and not the twins. So I think some people <laughs> may have some issues with that, but I didn't, I thought all worked pretty well within the way of the movie. Cause I also like the new version of monster. We got out of this too. But... She was great. She was great. She was, you know, very, very, uh, uh ethereal. Uh, and she supported the boys. You know what I mean? It wasn't like she took over either, not to be, you know, whatever, but like she was there when she needed to be, she cool. played her role perfectly. I love it when she came in when these two were fighting and she's like, all right, boys, that's enough. <laughs> oh God. That was so cool. When they're, uh, when Godzilla just wasn't having any of Kong and Kong's like, yo, come on, we check it. We got to do this shit together. And then they're busting up pyramids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was just, that was well, so Kong cool. At first, you can tell he's pulling his punches and he's like, fuck this. I'm not right. pulling any more punches. So, <laughs> and that's a big thing, guys. That's a big thing is that I got a lot of Kong character in this. A lot. This was this was in a. In they even almost, gave Godzilla a little more character in this too. Yeah, but it was about Kong, like journeying to find his other. He, he found his kin. All right, I got to save this kin. What do I got to do to save the kin? I got to fight. I got to team up with Godzilla. Oh, man. All right, let's go. 
he had a lot. He was doing a lot in this movie. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I, I loved it. I loved it. No, we had a longer discussion on it last night, but I'm sure we'll mm-hmm. be talking about it more in the next few days, and I don't want to dwell on it too much more. But we got a few more Super Chats, and then we're going to finish this up anyway. We got Accident Seller, who says, oh, Six checked out, too. Sorry about that, Six. I was going to give you a, a last yeah, thought a on the film, um, but she had to bail. Um, Accident Seller sends in 20 Norwegian Corona, Triple X version, Godzilla X Dong, the oh. new compire. <laughs> the new compire. Oh. You know, it's funny uh, is that both film uh, Ghostbusters and this one has that they have an empire in their in their they do. title, and they both yeah. have two two main characters looking at each other longingly too. I'm gay not gonna work ghost, out, gay ghost, gay lizards now too, and and Godzilla <laughs> transitions even. People are uh, out of their minds with the woke watching sometimes, man. Uh, and and changer of the ways of Bebop Boop says uh, this is so true. Schlock is fine if it's not if it's not self serious. Did Snyder say that? If he did, that's one of the few smart things he's ever said. Mm. Uh, Jason Webster says I love Millennium Area Godzilla films, especially Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, and from two thousand two. I love Shin Godzilla minus one and Godzilla King of Monsters. That's it. Well, you might enjoy this one, Jason, if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, Accident Seller says a 20 Norwegian Corona, eight year old boy in me wants Kong and Zilla wielding dual Uzis. You get almost get that. Almost. <laughs> Getting close. It's close. Almost. I mean, I mean, that hand, that, that, that hand thing. Here, yeah. It was just badass, bro. Right. We're getting there. Uh, but see, those Angel- are things. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, Tom, those are things too that, that go back to our childhood. How did we play with our toys with? You know, we would all we would we would add different shit to like, oh, you know, here's here's my Shogun guy, but I'm gonna put his hand on on a on Luke. Now he's Skywalker. got a laser gun, right? Now he's got a laser gun. I'm, I'm gonna jack you up. It was never just <laughs> you played with what you had. And he would like you know put stuff together, especially with our GI Joes. I don't know what. And if that's and this movie Kong. is kind of like that in a weird way, but yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. It is kind of like two kids just play with their toys that just builds and builds and builds. Build. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. That's why I think the director uh, was really uh, enjoying himself. Everyone was. Oh, you can tell. You can tell. Mm-hmm. First Angel sends in five and says, in defense of women of that time, it was easier to ban alcohol than divorcing an alcoholic. That's probably true. Whoa. First what was Angel. it? Oh, we were talking a little bit about uh, suffrage and, and when first thing women did when they could vote was uh, <laughs> uh, when they did uh, ban alcohol. Uh, Jason right. Webster says, Chris Gore hated Godzilla uh, X Kong New Empire. He called it bad Godzilla movie, a terrible dumb movie with poor CGI. Eh, that's his. Uh, that's his uh, opinion on it. And yeah, uh, I disagree. You know, yeah, Changer of the Ways of Beatbot Boop says uh, that was aimed at Snyder. He thinks his. Sh- oh, okay. I was gonna say if yeah, I, I can't believe Snyder would say that. <laughs> Thank you oh, for correcting yeah. me. I was gonna say, well, then I'm glad, glad I can take that back. <laughs> Thank you for that and the two dollars. And with that, we are caught up. And I want to thank you, Polly, for hopping in the last minute. I want to thank Six for all our extra help. I want to thank all the mods today for helping out uh, and all that kind of stuff. It was a great show today. Thank you, Paul, for coming in here as well. Uh, so, yeah, Paul, any, you got uh, anything coming up you want to? Uh, well, we got a lot going on on our, on Midnight's Edge, period, right? So, guys, make sure you are subscribed to all our channels, Midnight's Edge, Midnight's Edge After Dark, and Espanol. We have... Mm-hmm. Uh, pablo and fletch are now back live every wednesday and it's it's pretty bilingual so like if you're watching it uh, they'll go into spanish for for a trip for a time then the then the english they're just really smart dudes uh every wednesday here right after a midnight touch live and no i'm actually what i'm gonna do tom i'm actually going on vacation finally this what monday is that? i've never heard um, of that I know. Well, my vacation is going <laughs> to be in South Carolina, but I'm oh. putting away the phone. I'm putting everything away for. Oh, me. gotcha. You're taking full on. Uh, full so okay. I'm um I'm planning all my videos and everything for next week. So hit the slant, subscribe, and you'll get some great entertainment. Sounds good, my friend. All right. Thank you for hopping in. We appreciate yep. that. And do check out Midnight's Edge Espanol if you haven't already. Uh, it's an awesome place to hang out, and they do all kinds of their own. It's not like we. It's just the bilingual version of this stuff. It's their, it's their own uh, stuff. So guys, check it out uh, from their own perspective. Uh, it's amazing stuff that the, the guys and gals do over there. And we thank you, Polly, as well. And uh, with that, guys, we're gonna say, as Andre says, it's time for 
koalas in the rain. I can find the button. Koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. No fucks given. Koala, koala. Koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. No fucks given. Koala, koala.